Hello and welcome to Q&A, 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 Friday, ooh, hello, hello, this is Q&A Friday, another episode, I'm here with Vinny, the flycatcher, extraordinaire. Please only listen when you can safely close your eyes. This is Let Me Bore You to Sleep. My name is Jason Newland. So I've got the window closed, the curtains drawn. I've got the door closed and it's a little bit stuffy in here. And I've got Vinny jumping all over me trying to catch the fly he should have been a cat the way he's just sitting there he's waiting for the fly to come to him that's how lazy he is he won't he won't chase it he'll wait till it gets into his airspace and then he tries to grab it so his airspace blimey so hey hey So today is Friday, the 1st of November, 2024. Hope you're all well. And earlier today, I did, I made a recording, a body scan, a deep sleep whisper hypnosis recording, which I haven't done one of those for a while. So I've done one today. Oh. My chair is reclining on its own. Bit weird. So yeah. And I'm. Had a little bit of a. Enthusiasm spurt. Regarding making hypnosis recordings hmm not quite sure where that's going but yeah so I just did one today I think in a way because I'm doing whatever it takes to distract myself from actually doing any coursework That might be why I did the recording. Uh, It's now quarter to four in the afternoon. So again, I'm doing this earlier than I normally do. I normally, yeah, I think I normally do it around about early evening. But I'll do this. It's not going to be a long recording. I know I say that fairly often and it ends up being about nine hours, but... It's not going to be a long one because there's not many questions. So maybe Q&A Friday's dying down. I don't know. I mean, we don't. I don't need lots and lots of questions each time. But it's useful to have a few. 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 I'm just an advert. What's this advert for? What? What is this? An advert for spiritual dating. What on earth is that about? Oh, Fabio Wardley. Okay, right. So let's go to what I was supposed to be doing. Jason Newland's boring group. By the way, I have a YouTube channel if you want to watch, well, listen to the 10 hour versions of these recordings on YouTube. You can. It's a black screen or dark screen after the first 10 seconds, and it's the full 10 hours. Um. Also, there's the Facebook group, of course. 
Jason Newland's boring group, which you can join if you wanna. Wow, six hours ago that I did that deep sleep whisper hypnosis number five hundred and fourteen body scan. So yeah, so let's have a look, see what the um questions. I got three. Three questions. So that's that's cool. I'm fine. Fine with three. Three three three. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. No, it is. It's okay. Chris and Tom or Anne and Michelle. So three questions. I'll start with Chris. What's your favourite genre genre of mu of movie? Um I say my favourite genre of movie is It's crazy. As soon as I start a podcast, the shouting starts in the garden. The shouty people start off. It's it's almost like there's a remote control. Whenever I press uh the record on the recording equipment, it starts them up as well. Weird, I don't know. So Chris asks, what's your favourite genre of movie? I mean, my first answer to that would be comedy. But unfortunately, the, it's there's not... I mean, I do watch a fair few movies, actually, these days. And it doesn't seem to be many comedy movies like just solely comedy there's quite a few horror movies that have got comedy content and there's maybe dramas that have comedy content but just like full on comedy shows or movies you know uh, for example The Life of Brian or Airplane or um not police squad. I was going to say Top Gun. What were the police squad movies? You know those ones. Leslie Nielsen. And so to have something that's just a comedy. You know, I love a comedy movie. It just doesn't seem to be... Unless I'm just missing them. There doesn't seem to be many around that are top notch so and I'm a little bit worried about the age thing because I've been watching Big Brother can you hear it can you hear the screaming in the garden or not because I can hear it it distracts me but you may not be able to hear it because the microphone's near my voice and not near them I just, yeah. Anyway, so let's focus on this. I... I do wonder if maybe... It's not that my tastes have changed. It's just that the audience has changed. And the comedy movies, I suppose, like Barbie... Barbie, is it? Barbie was the... That was like a huge movie, wasn't it? And I just couldn't... It didn't hit me. Maybe it will do in the future. Maybe I was in the wrong state of mind to watch it and enjoy it. But I didn't... I mean, I've never had a Barbie doll, so I don't, you know... I don't think you need to have had a Barbie doll to watch it. I don't think you need to have owned a shark to enjoy Jaws, you know, but... Or to be attacked by a shark. It's... I don't know. It just... It wasn't... I mean, uh, visually, it's amazing. An amazing movie visually. But I just couldn't... It didn't... It just... Uh, I just didn't... Didn't sort of connect with me. So... 
that concerns me that it's not that or well, I've not either I've not caught up I've not kept up with the times which you know it's very easy I mean I've I've noticed the amount of words that are being used wrongly now and even the dictionary are now updating to start using those words wrongly because of a song because you know uh, a popular song this year used a word in a different context so the English dictionaries decided to change it's like I don't really get it I know I probably sound like an old man because I am an old man old man but maybe that's just what we've always done all generations have done that I just I've I've only really become more aware of it lately. Uh, I think it's because I've got two young people moved in to the flats here. And one was like 19, the other one was 25. And they were talking about stuff that, like saying, using phrases that I did not understand. Like really don't know what you're talking about. And that they'd explain it to me. But it's almost like a different language. And like verbally speaking out loud text language. Uh, I remember years ago the whole LOL. Like LOL, LOL used to mean lots of love. And it was something that was a standard like you know birthday greetings lots of love but I mean personally I would put lots of love because I'm not lazy I know how to spell the individual words but I think some people weren't sure but they said to put lol so that's how it used to be you know in my in my old years years ago right Vinny I'm going to ask you one more time Stop. He's just annoying me now because he's just looking. He's on edge the whole time wanting to catch this fly. And I'm trying to relax. Vinny, relax. <laughs> he won't relax. Until he catches the fly that he's never going to catch. He's never going to catch it ever in the history of the world. He's not. But he's going to keep trying. Just calm down, nice and relaxed. I prefer it when he comes and he lies next to me and cuddles up and I stroke him and he just goes to sleep. Just for that little period of time, you know, just a bit of quiet. It calms me down and I think it possibly calms him down as well. Yeah, I've got a letter and I've got a text message because even in text messages, LOL used to mean lots of love. I mean, it's probably used more in text messages, like in the early days. And then it started being used because of the internet and like Facebook and whatever. LOL became, became laughing out loud. And when my nan passed away, I had a friend who's probably 10 years older than me, or 15, 13 years older than me. He sent me a text message. I said, sorry to hear about your nan. LOL. Now, I knew what he meant, so... I mean, I actually found it quite funny, because it was kind of an out-of-context situation. It was, I knew it meant lots of love. But it kind of made me chuckle a little bit, which I kind of needed, to be honest. Just because it's just, no one really uses that term anymore for lots of love. And this is, blimey, what was it, nearly 10 years? 
10 years ago my nan passed away. It would be 29th of uh, December. So it's going to be a weird, weird, kind of weird one this year because it will be a year on 24th of November since my friend passed away. And then a month later it will be a whole decade since my nanny left. So it's just going to be a weird... It's strange, every Friday, this isn't particularly pleasant to talk about, but every Friday afternoon, I think about my friend. Because that's when he passed away. And I just like, every Friday, for some reason, it's just, you know, around like one thirty, whatever time it was, I went down there. Every Friday, pretty much since, since it happened. And that day is etched in my mind, unfortunately. I even remember I took Vinny for a walk. And he, there was downstairs, they were getting the flat ready, the council doing a little banging and stuff downstairs. So they were getting the, the flat ready for the next tenant who then moved in about two weeks after my friend passed away. And, or maybe three weeks, I don't know. But it was pretty shortly afterwards. And they'd been doing the flat for about two weeks. I don't know what on earth they do down there. I don't know, I really, I don't know what, what, what it was, but they were making, doing quite a lot of banging. And I took Vinny for a walk, partly just to get out of there because it was quite noisy. Now I'm thinking, was it coming from my friends for that? It sounded like it was coming from downstairs. So I took Vinny for a walk into the fields. And it was a long walk. And when we was out there, I heard someone shout and help. So I'm looking for the person. I'm yelling. Hello, hello. And this is probably, I don't know, 11 o'clock, I imagine. 11 o'clock or something in the afternoon, in the morning, morning, 11 to 12, something like that. And I'm shouting, hello, hello. And I was getting nothing back, but all I could hear was help, help. Which freaked me out. So me and Vinny are looking for this person. And eventually we're running around, well, okay, walking a little bit quicker than normal and okay we're walking at a normal pace but I'm just saying that I was definitely looking around quicker than I normally look around my eyes were moving my, my eyes are moving more than often than normally more than often it's near the normal that's not even a sentence is it so yeah anyway and this this woman comes out of the this ditch, well not a ditch, but like this uh, pathway that's covered in trees. It couldn't see her. And she had a dog. And I said, was that you? Yelling. She said, yeah. I said, what's up? What's, what's wrong? She said, nothing. I said, well, why were you shouting help? She said, I wasn't. And I said, well, you're shouting something. And uh, I think her dog's called Yelp or Belp or I don't know. She had, she had a dog that was that had basically got off the lead, and she was shouting for her dog. And she apologised to me. Not she didn't need to apologise. I was just concerned. You know, if I hear someone shouting help, I get obviously we, like anyone else would. You you kind of like oh what's going on. It's just weird that she wasn't shouting for help. On a day that I wish I had heard someone shouting for help, my friend might still be here if he'd been able to shout for help. Because I was always listening out for him. Uh, oh well. So, yeah, the one I talked about 
different um, genres, genres. I know how it's set. I know how it's pronounced. So genres of movies, I would say. I do like science fiction. I love comedy, but comedies. I said I don't. There's not a huge. I suppose I like. I do. I do enjoy superhero movies. I do. Um, it's just unfortunately that the DC movies seem to take themselves way too seriously. I mean, I'm not even going to watch The Joker 2. I just won't. I'm not going to watch that. Um, so the DC movies seem to take themselves a little bit too seriously. Uh, I'm thinking more of the Batman movies. Um, I think they did well with the Superman Batman, The Flash, those ones. And they did really, I think The Flash was good. It was funny. So The Flash was really good. But, Vinny, will you sit still for two seconds, please? Please? Wow. <laughs> Just calm down, calm down. Sit down and calm down. Good boy. So, but on the, on the flip side, the Marvel movies, which were brilliant, have now gone too far in the kind of silliness. It's kind of a weird one because they mix serious and silliness, but in a extremes. So the the last Thor movie was it God of Thunder. Um, I watched it. I enjoyed it, but it was like there were parts of it that were ridiculous, like really, really bad. Like kind of, but there were also parts that were really quite serious, a little bit too serious for what it was. It just I don't know. It was a weird mix. But I'm loyal to the franchise, as it were. Although I've never been a... I prefer it when they're all together. Really. I mean, I've, I've enjoyed each film individually. But I prefer when they're all... Once they brought them all together. It's like Thor was good on his own. Um, I mean, Hulk hasn't done a movie on his own since... Blimey. 20 years ago, whatever it was. Ed Norton, I think it was the last time. It was a long time ago. Uh, but then you had... The... Spider-Man ones. So I always liked the Spider-Man movies. And... Iron Man... So that was kind of the movies, and then they got them together, didn't they? And then they introduced, like, Black Hawk or whatever, Hawkeye, and then, uh, what's the name? The Russian uh, assassin. And so bringing them all together, it worked for me, really. It worked for a lot of people, to be fair. It was very good. They, I, I enjoyed it. And it was funny, like really funny at, at parts. And so I liked that. Logie was in it and he was funny. And the Hulk, I liked that version of the Hulk as well. I just, I like the, I like him when he's not the Hulk. He was kind of my favourite person to have played the Hulk outside of, you know, the original TV series because it just I don't plays it well maybe I don't know what it is but he's yeah I mean the fact that he could be in the whole movie the last movie and didn't he he didn't even turn into the Hulk and he still 
had a lot of good parts. It just shows you how good of an actor he is, or how good the character is. Uh, I think, I think Iron Man was much better when he was with the others, and the dialogue, you know, between him and uh, Thor, and I just, I think it just worked. And then when they brought Spider Man in, that was really nice the way. Iron Man took Spider-Man under his wing because he's just a kid, isn't he, in the movies? And that was... And Happy and... All, all the different, like, parts of that was just really cool. It was nice. I liked it. And... I think when they started... Because um, Disney took over or bought Marvel I don't know how it worked out but Disney now owns Marvel and they haven't improved it I don't think yeah that's why I would say that I don't think they've improved it I think it, it had the right mix The, all the all the Avenger movies, I think, were just perfect, perfect movies, all of them. And then after the last Avenger movie, Disney decided to start making TV shows like Loki. Did I say Loki earlier? Didn't I? Loki, um, She Hulk. Uh, what was it, Miss Marvel? Or Mrs. Marvel, Ms. Marvel, or whatever. Um, just quite a few different ones. And they were interesting, and they're some of them quite funny. And they dig, they seem to dig much deeper into the whole multiple universe or multiverse situation. And I just got a little bit confusing, to be fair. However, Marvel did what what they have done well is and I think that's more to do with Ryan Reynolds is the um what's his name? Oh, it's got out of my head the name. But that was a good movie. <laughs> what, what what was what was Death Death, um, death list, not death list. Death list, so whatever it's called. Why well, can't be? Oh, blimey! I mean, so it was. It was a list on the board, wasn't it? Of the first movie, it was who would be killed first. Death list. The, the kill it's gone out of my head it's just because I'm trying to think of it it will come back in a minute don't worry it is there I know but I'm not going to give I'm not going to give myself a hard time because a lot of uh, information goes into my head on a daily basis it's all in books I listen to that's what it is and no I'm not Sitting next to my bookcase, hearing things, I listen to audiobooks. Death Wish, not Death Wish. Death Row, Death. Uh. Anyway, I I like that movie. I like all three, but I enjoyed the third one because, and that was Marvel. But it was an eighteen, I think, or was it? Eight, was it an eighteen? Death Rod. Death Will. No. Death Leopard. Dead. 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 Dead Pam. Dead Pam. Dead. Dead. Deadpool. Yeah! Deadpool, blimey. Let's see. I'm so slow sometimes. I love it. 
I love being slow. It's one of my favourite things. I'm actually waiting for delivery today. I got some uh, stationery I had to order from Amazon because for my course I need to start doing like taking notes and I didn't have anything even my last pen ran out because I was on the phone delivered really so how is that delivered I'm going to have to see if it has been delivered because oh yes someone has delivered some stuff that's good right I see it on the camera and also see if anyone takes it as well <laughs> see if any of the thieves are about so I just got like a pad some uh, pens marker pens just things that I can help with the course so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to jump back on it soon I am but it's just got a little bit I took the week off took the week off and I'm okay with that I've I've done a fair bit this week on other stuff but I mean I might I might do something later I might do something over the weekend just but I think what I might I'm thinking of doing is starting right at the beginning again from week one and I've got this divider pad which is going to be broken up by weeks for each module so I think there's ugh, I don't know six weeks in the first module so what I'll do is I'll take notes and of the first work because you know so just so it's a, a bit more absorbed in my brain and then I won't spend as much time on it as I did previously because I won't need to and maybe do that for a week and then just or for half a week or whatever then just do the other two get just catch up I hope to be caught up by next week yeah that's the plan but it's all right i'm okay with it it's uh say shout out to sebastian now then um also also i want to say another shout out to megan as well so couple of shout outs what am I listening to at the moment I'm currently listening <laughs> you didn't ask that did you what I'm currently listening to is a book by Mark Leary it's called Understanding the Mysteries of Human Behaviour so that's my current book that I'm reading I mean you know if I'm if I'm listening to it it's still reading it isn't it I'm just not visually reading it that makes sense but I am still reading it I'm, li I'm listening to it and that's the weird thing about it because I was like oh, oh man I'll just I'll get off the course I'll just pack it in the thing is I'm listening to psychology audiobooks because not for the course but because I'm interested in it it actually fascinates me and why would I give up a course on a subject that really interests me when what would be the point in that it just would be kind of a silly thing so I guess the real issue at the moment is the style that having to kind of learn how to do things in that certain way because I'm used to just reading absorbing never getting tested for it and to, the idea of having to do essays and stuff you know it's a bit ugh. it's okay but it's a little bit mm. a bit mm. <laughs> uh. and there's also I guess 
because I'm this I'm studying child development, child psychology. I suppose I'm kind of more I'm very much interested in the brain. I'm interested in the brain development, but I'm interested in the brain itself uh, when it comes to. probably adults I, I don't know but just people I'm interested in the whole kind of uh, the psychological studies that have been done over the years and um, it's interesting how ethics has changed things so on some levels we're going to learn less because of the ethics stops psychiatrists or psychologists or students or whatever studying researchers doing things that they used to do 40 50 years ago they can't do that stuff anymore which means they have to find other ways of doing it and it's it's very much more it seems more observant observing people rather than splitting up a group um, i was just literally just watching this thing on youtube and I've seen two different versions of it, so it's a genuine thing. Uh, I fact-checked it. And a study was done, it was a long time ago. And they, this research, it was, this, it was a, I don't know the name of the man, but he was really an expert on stuttering. And he was fascinated by the subject, and he wanted to help people. So what he did, he he did a study where he... And I think it might have been in, they did it in an orphanage or something. I, I, I was half listening, to be fair. I was on the toilet. I was focusing on other things, but I was listening, I was listening to it. And then I, then I watched another, another ver, vision, vision, another version of that experiment. So basically split it, split the group in two, two different groups, separated them completely told one group that um, your speech is perfect. So if they got people that some of the kids had stutters, some didn't. So it's like your, your, if they had a stutter, so your speech is fine. It's, it's, it's just a, a phase you're going through. You're going to be absolutely fine. Don't take any notice of any, anything anyone says to you. You're going to be fine. It's going to be absolutely fine. Just give it time. And told everyone else in that group that their speech was perfect. Absolutely perfect. The other group, they told them that there was the ones that had a, the one that already had a stutter. Nothing was ever going to get rid of it. And they told all the others, people, the kids that didn't have stutters, that they had the beginnings of a stutter. And there's nothing they could do about it. So they said the only way, only thing you can do is you have to do everything you can to stop it, even if it means not talking. So this caused huge distress to one group. And I mean, it might have been really distressful for the other group as well, like the ones that were stuttering, being told there was nothing wrong with them, yet they were probably still stuttering. I don't know. We got stopped anyway. This, uh, as far as I remember, <laughs> I was half listening, but as far as I remember, this this is only about an hour ago. I was watching this, so we got stopped for ethical reasons. So there is, I mean, there's another one. I uh, forget his name, but they they wanted to cause a phobia in this little kid, Albert. Yeah, a kid called Albert. And the white bunny rabbit. So they, and he was like a toddler sitting in a room on a high chair at a table. And it's in a research facility. And they just give him the bunny rabbit. And he's, no, it's, it was a white rat. Maybe a white rat. I don't know. Might be a rabbit. I think it was a rat. But it was, the little kid was happy playing with it. You know, loved it. And then. They took it away and then they brought it back. And every time they gave the rat to the to the little kid, 
Albert. They would make the make the kid jump, um, making a really loud bang or something. And they kept doing that, so eventually the kid was petrified of the rat. So again, that would be unethical now. I can't do stuff like that. But it did show, you know, trying to figure out how how phobias could be created. So it's kind of, it was well-meaning. <laughs> it was well-meaning. But, you know, it's, some of the studies is, I've read a few over the years. Wow. Wow. But there's also some myths. Um, a Skinner's box. Like Skinner was a uh, very big... all about um, conditions, condition, whatever thing is it's called, you know, where one thing leads to another. So uh started off really with the old dogs saliva in because they were hungry or because they smelt the food and they, they would, they would saliva. Well, Finney doesn't really do that, but Alsatians do that, I know. And what they'd do is they'd ring a bell at the same time as getting the food ready. Or they'd ring a bell when it was time for dinner. And then they realised that when they rang the bell, even if they didn't bring any food out, the dog would still be dripping with saliva. <laughs> hungry, hungry, give me food. <laughs> um, so, like, conditioned responses. and So they would basically... Skinner had a box. And I can't remember. I think it might have been like a... They did all things with mazes and got, you know, I'm not going to go into it, but they did loads of different things. But there's this myth, apparently, that I think it was Skinner used to put his kids into the box so to kind of experiment psychologically with his kids. And apparently it never happened, but it is in some books it did, which is a bit rough. Rough, rough, get, get, it's a, it's a dog pun there, terrible. It wasn't supposed to be. Uh, so I, I find that stuff really fascinating. I really do. And the, the group mentality is, so interesting and I see it on TV and I watch the you know things that happen we had a few things this year in the summer and it's really weird right this whole the basically I'm not going to go into details but basically it was this really horrible thing that happened in the UK and the person that did it it was released online that the person that did it was that it was a terrorist act yeah and people all over the country came onto the streets and started it got it got really out of hand for about a week or so really really out of hand and then the pl the police and the public, the, the you know, the parliament and the people in charge started saying, oh, but it, it's, it's not, you know, you're doing all this based upon uh, an allegation that's not being proven, you don't know who it was. And Well, now he's being charged with terrorism or with, you know, being part of a terrorist kind of thing having terrorist material. It's like, okay, so after all that, you're you saying that he... So whoever said it originally obviously knew what they were talking about. But they got it a bit wrong. But yeah, I've got a lot to say about that, but I won't, because some things are just so obvious. You know? But hey. All I want is peace, baby. I just want peace. Can't we just get along? Please. 
very strange seeing people in groups. Because it is, what well, is it like the group is as intelligent as the least intelligent person? It's a bit like, you know, a chain is as strong as its weakest link. Which is true, isn't it? So, it's people dumb down. It's like they, and it's a frenzy. And I don't think it's their fault. It's just human nature. It's a human thing. And they do things that they would never do normally. I've even seen it just in a small group. You know, like in uh, in the nightclub and people come in. On their own, there wouldn't have been a problem. Two people, there wouldn't have been a problem. But once there's maybe 15, 20 of them, they something happens they I don't know if they become braver or dumber or I don't know but I mean they've done studies in the past even uh, what was it called what's that TV show Candid Camera and they did this thing and that's kind of like started off as a social experiment so they showed this lift or elevator and this man walks in to the elevator and when the doors closed the elevator was full the lift was full of people there were maybe, I don't know, five, six people in there everybody else turned round and faced the other way and so did the man and they repeated this and I'm, I'm adding my own material here because it might not be true but the thing is, right, someone say, yeah, he's just copying what everyone's doing. But I've been in lifts where you go in one side and you go out the other side. So I've gone in lifts where you literally, you turn around and you go out the other way. Or you might not be sure which way, which side it's going to open. So it's not particularly a weird thing to do, really. So there. Yeah, that that's the stuff I find really fascinating. I don't really know why. I'm not so fascinated in the the mental. I used to be really interested in mental illness. Uh, just like, just interested in it. In I don't know. I think having. I suppose I don't know. I'm just. I'm not as interested. In that as much as the general population. Why the general population are the way they are. Why people say the things they say. You know, um, you know what I mean? You know what I mean? You know what I mean? You get me, you get me, you get me, you get... Um, with that, that kind of repetitive phrases that I've heard and I used to do it myself I used to think I used to absolutely adore I still do Frank Bruno he is a hero he's a UK, he's a, a legend during my youth well you know up to my 20s or 30s whatever he was yeah so he but he was famous for saying you know what I mean, Harry? You know what I mean, Harry? And, okay, it wasn't a good impression. But I went through a phase where every other word, every other sentence was, you know what I mean? And it was annoying. I even annoyed myself. I remember once I was in a conversation, I was like, oh, God, stop doing this. Whew. That was a relief. I've been saying, you know what I mean, all week, and it's driving me but I see like especially on YouTube and videos and people talking well it's going to be videos isn't it if it's on YouTube but that kind of repetitive I don't really I don't know 
not sure why, why it's done. Is it to fit in? Is it to feel part of a group? Because apparently I'm the odd one out for not really needing to be part of a group. To, and it's not that I don't want to fit in, but I'm not that bothered. I generally get on with most people. And, but I'm not part of a, a group of people. Well, humans, but I'm not. I'm, I'm an alien. <laughs> I'm waiting to go back to my planet, wherever that is. So, movies, that's what I was talking about. So, yeah, movies. I don't, thing is, I'm, I do like a horror movie for some reason. But not horrible horror movies. I like silly horror movies. Ones that have got humour. Ones where you kind of don't care about the the lead character. Um there was one recently, it wasn't a horror movie, but it was a it was a drama and it was oh I think it was Get Me Out of Here or something. And it's I'll give you the premise. Because you find out very quickly what the premise is anyway. So I'm not going to give anything away. Not really. But there's this man. Takes his daughter to a concert. And to a like a, a pop concert. And he's a wanted serial killer basically. And the whole venue is surrounded. And they're looking for him. They know he's in there. They don't know what he looks like. But they know he's got a tattoo on his wrist or whatever, you know. Now it's really weird because... I found myself rooting for him. Even though... He didn't deserve... He did not deserve my rooting. He didn't. He, he, he damn... Tooting didn't deserve my rooting. But the way they, they kind of changed it around so that you're kind of rooting for him to get out. Because at every step there is kind of the police are there and he's and it's it's very cleverly done. It won it went on a little bit too long. It's my only little criticism of it. It went on a little bit too long. It didn't need to go on any longer than when it, once it's finished, it was finished, but they carried it on longer than it needed to be but it was very good it was very clever the way they did the whole thing and yeah I like that stuff like that I mean it wasn't necessarily funny to be fair but I do like funny comedies I mean is that one where there's a two blokes I forget what it's, what it's called but they genuinely they're accidentally well I don't know what I was talking about because I just got someone knocking at the door so I had some deliveries which I already knew was out there but I picked them up also my neighbour just gave me a CD a signed CD and you might think that's a weird thing to do that's what I thought <laughs> no <laughs> it's, it's my new my new coffee cup toaster coaster toaster no not really um see my neighbor used to be quite famous in the 60s in the psychedelic movement music wise and he was in some bands he was in the charts he was you know he was quite big in that era of the psychedelic movement so he still sells he still makes albums now and still sells stuff still sells songs and his recordings so I just asked him I've known him for years and years now I said is has he got a an album that he can give me that I can was a specific one that I listened to on Amazon Music because his stuff's on there it's called Twinkie T-W-I-N-K-Y 
and he was in a band called the Pink Fairies. But he was also in other bands and stuff as well. But he, yeah, he's, he's about my dad's age, just maybe, yeah, pretty much the same age as my dad. And it's a lovely bloke. And I just, just, yeah, I just thought it'd be nice because I've known a lot of comedians in the past, not anymore, but I used to know a lot of comedians, many of which were already on television and others that went on to be famous and that. Never known a musician. I mean, I went, I had lunch with a bloke from the specials, a lead singer from the specials in, I don't know, the early 90s. But that was with my friend Helen, who was friends with him. So I didn't know who he was until afterwards. You know, it's only after the dinner she said, you don't know who that was? I said, well, yeah, was, I knew his name. Well, because she kept, I knew what his name was, his first name. Because we were, we had sort of two hours eating together. But I didn't know who he was. And then I realised it's a bloke, because one of my favourite songs when I was a kid was called Ghost Town. Ghost Town, ah, ghost town, all the things are underground. And he was one of these bands that, he wasn't in it for himself. And he was very much multicultural as well, uh, which was, I mean, it did happen, but it was it was kind of quite new in like the late 70s, early 80s, um, where it was really, there was quite a few in the band. So none of them were going to make huge amounts of money because of how many of them there was. You know, it wasn't like if it was like three people or four people in a band. But there was like probably ten or more people. I'm making that up, but there was a lot. And I just remember that ghost town because it was a number one. And it was based, the video, I'm sure it was in an arcade or like a, it's like a roller coaster. You know those ghost, um, what are they called? ghost houses or something you go through in the oh man what are they called we used to have one uh, where I used to live and there was this blimey I used to love it it's only a small thing but I was so tiny everything was big back then and there was a roller coaster there was a big wheel, I think, um, or maybe not, maybe not, I don't know. And there was a ghost house, maybe it was a ghost house. And you'd go in and you'd go and there'd be cobwebs and things jumping up going, stuff like that. Yeah. It was, the video was kind of like that a bit. This town, oh... The ghost town, and he was in quite a few bands. Very successful, loved, very loved around like the music industry. Like he was just one of those really loved and respected people, and very um, yeah. I just got the I got the sense that it wasn't all about him. To him, it was about enjoying it about enjoying the music and enjoying the lifestyle of being with other musicians and yeah that's what I got he's a nice nice bloke actually bearing in mind he was famous and especially then I mean this was early 90s so he was famous famous in this country he didn't come across like that came across very if anything I felt like the famous one if <laughs> yeah no but he just came across as just a, just a nice person and they would him and uh, Helen that's it him and Helen were kind of just discussing some 
I think some work they were going to do together because she was a she was a producer program producer or director or something so she would do projects and you know she she got to know lots of people because of that yeah but anyway that's that he's this man here is the only person I've really known although talk about movies earlier one of my only claim to fame which is a bit sad really but one of my claim to fame is I used to know Spider-Man's dad Dominic Holland so Tom Holland is Spider-Man the actor he's Tom Holland his dad's called Dominic Holland and he's a comedian and I used to know him like not wasn't like best friends but very friendly terms used to see him would have a chat he was really good comedian and when I first met him he was still at university and it's really weird to just think now his his son is a huge star now wow it's amazing and his son wasn't even born then so I thought I might as well just open this open the packages I've got three packages here from Amazon right I don't even know what this is you're joking me these aren't the pens I ordered these don't look like the pens I ordered so there's one, two, three, four, five, six pens. But they look little. Unless my fingers have grown. I think I'm at the age now where I've got sausage fingers. That's weird. They're the same pens, but the tops are a bit rubbish. Like the tops. They don't even. Blind me. I like the tops that have the little, I like it when the top's bigger than the pen. Not bigger than the pen, but you know you can get it off with one thumb. This, it's like, it's slippery and just, no, don't like that. Never mind. So there's the pens. This is my ruled notebook. So let's open this up. I've had an idea, right? Not right now. Oh, blimey, I've already ripped it open. I go to rip the plastic open. I ended up with my finger now ripping open the the cover. Wow, I've ruined it already. It's not the first time that's happened. That's weird. Anyway, so I've got this ruled no notebook if I'm correct this is going to be my journal I decided to write a journal and then turn it into a book that's what I'm going to do either that or no, it's going to be a journal. That's it. Because I used to have journals for years and years and years. Decades, in fact, I had journals. And then I destroyed them all. So this is going to be the start or the restart of my journaling. And I'm thinking that maybe once a year I'll release a book. And it'll just be the year that I've had. And I'll just I write down stuff and and then I'll have a mixture of this and a mixture of the Let Me Boy to Sleep podcast. So I'll have the transcript from them as well. And between that I'll put together a book and maybe release that in January every year. Or or or, 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 I started 
today, 1st of November, finish it on the 31st of October, that'll be a whole year, and then write it and release it in time for Christmas. So November till October, that'll be the year, maybe, I don't know, we'll see, it's not like fully, fully planned out really. This is the last one of three. Oops, let's bang the microphone. I just banged the microphone there, so hopefully it's fine. So I just opened the last one. I don't know what this is. What is it? See, the pens I need, like literally my pen ran out. I spoke to the dentist yesterday and I was trying to write down the dentist appointment time and I couldn't because the pen ran out and it had a lid on but it still ran out I was furious so I ordered those pens so there's eight I think is it eight one two three four no six so I've got six pens three blue three black I've got my journal so that's going to be separate anyway so I'm going to be writing my journal every day This is, blimey, wow. So this is like little dividers and stuff for, yeah, for note taking and things like that. So this is just part of, um, part of what I need going forward to really make the most of you know I figure it this way if I'm going to do this which I am and that's of course a change of mind tomorrow if I'm going to do this then I might as well do it you know like properly and yeah makes time, makes makes sense to me or I've also got dry eraser markers as well, so that's good. So I've got dry eraser markers, 12 pens, four colours. So I've got some uh, a thing coming. So that is basically, I don't know where my phone is. Any idea of anywhere my phone is? I had a phone. I definitely had a phone. Oh, there it is. I just turned the TV on by mistake. Oh, man. So, this is just stuff to help me with the coursework. I need to find a way to learn. I think I do learn. I think I can learn. I just don't know how much is staying in, if that makes sense. I don't know how much is being retained. Retained. It's very hard to know. Very difficult to. I don't know. We'll see. But my favourite genres of movie. I like science fiction. I do. I like I like weird movies. I don't like romantic movies. I know you've asked me what I do like, not what I don't like, but it's not that I don't like them. I just see things have changed as I got older. If I watch a movie or a TV show, if there's lots of adult scenes like romantic shall we say I fast forward through those because I don't want to see it I'm not interested it spoils it for me 30 years ago I'd be playing it in slow motion like frame by frame so it's just weird how, how it's changed those bits I mean I used to wear <laughs> wear the videotapes out um, 
honestly, the, the room was really full of smoke. Not all of it was coming from the um, video player. But, so, what's your favourite? So, comedies. Comedies. I'd say comedies. I like. I do like a nice action movie as well. Something that's quite fast paced, but but without the dialogue. So, for example, Keanu Reeves is once where he's a hitman. Very little dialogue wasn't needed, and it was just full on. Full throttle right from beginning to end pretty much. And I enjoyed watching them. I watched all of them back to back and I liked it. It got it was I mean, it didn't get silly, it was silly from the start. But at the same time, it's like it was just a bit of fun. I mean, I don't know if there's any chance of that do do they can you really buy a suit that's bulletproof? I don't know. I Doubting it, to be honest with you. So, at least not one that you can do like roly polies on the floor with. You know, I think you'd be quite limited to your. Like, he's just waiting, it's like a crocodile. Like a crocodile waiting, waiting for someone to mistake his head for a rock and just step on him so he could snap. Vinny. Calm down, darling. Leave the fly alone. What's the fly ever done to you? What's the fly ever done to you, eh? What's the fly ever done to you? So, yeah, I would... I love superhero movies. I mean, genre... I do like some of the old movies, though, as well. So... I quite like some of the old musicals occasionally. Uh, yeah, I'm going quite. I like different things. So I, I know I've not really covered that for long, but uh, Michelle has asked, "Hi, Jason. Because it's Halloween time, I have two questions. Do you believe in ghosts, and have you ever had any spooky experiences?" Um, ba -bam, bam, bam. I do, I'm kind of when it comes to beliefs I don't believe or disbelief you know I don't I don't I don't have any kind of I mean I'm trying with with my life to reduce as many strong beliefs as I can um, I'm not trying to be serious I'll not give you a serious answer but just I don't know I know people that I've met that said they, they've seen ghosts and stuff. I, but I'll be honest with you, I would never be scared of it. I wouldn't be scared of a ghost. Just wouldn't. I'm not saying, well I say that now, but <laughs> I'm not saying I wouldn't if if I saw one, but I I don't fear it. I don't fear that stuff because ultimately... Um, I've never been hurt by a, a ghost. A ghost has never hurt me. And, it, you know, that's kind of how I see it. And I kind of feel the same way in a way of, you know, with foreigners. I say the word foreigners. I don't mean it in a derogative way, but some people have like a fear or really kind of have an issue with foreigners and they're just maybe scared scared of people coming to this country and thing is I've never ever ever in my entire life had a problem with a foreigner not really I've had plenty of problems with English people I've not really had any problems with people from other countries so I don't have that fear of... I know you're talking like ghosts and technically people from <laughs> other countries aren't ghosts. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying, you know, 
as far as fears go. I, I don't know. I don't. Not really. I don't really believe in that stuff. I'd, I'd love it to be true. I think it's brilliant. Just like um, anything like that. It's fascinating. But I don't think life is boring enough to want to kind of make stuff up. Life is weird enough as it is. We don't need to add, add stuff. You know, when I was a kid, I used to think, oh, werewolves and vampires was obsessed with that stuff and ghosts. And, you know, there was a time when I knew a lot about that stuff when I was probably about 11 or 12. I don't know. I was absolutely obsessed, like big time. But all my time I would spend studying, uh, like Saturdays I'd be in the library studying the history of witchcraft and werewolves and Vlad the Impaler and all those kinds of stuff. But I don't know, I've not seen anything. I mean, it's an old cliche, but it's the living that I would be wary of. No one else. I'd never be wary of any anything that wasn't alive. Only things that are alive. And it's weird. I mean, I know we perceive things differently because when I saw my friend, it wasn't him. When he was, he was, he was passed away. It wasn't him. It wasn't him. It was him. It was his body, but it wasn't him. Yet, I know other people that don't feel that way when they're with uh, someone that's passed away, it's still that person. But I realised, looking at him, that it wasn't. He was gone. Because how a person looks is not the person. That's not the person at all, is it? It's, they're gone. And, okay, it was just that everyone experiences things differently. So I'm not in a position to tell anyone how to feel or think. Um, but that was my experience of it. So having seen that, because the, the, the lady downstairs, she's asked, she thinks it might be haunted down there. Um, and I said, look, I said, you know, if my friend was still there, let's say if it, if it was a ghost, because she did say that if he's he's haunting me, I said, look, if he was a ghost, trust me, he would not give you hassle. The worst he would do is well, not the worst. He would look after you. He would look out for you. He would not hurt you. And I know that for a fact. Because if he wasn't going to be, if he was not like that when he was alive, why would he be like that when he's a ghost? That would make no sense, would it? Now, no, I'm just, I'm just, it wouldn't. It's like, but then he used to say he thought it was haunted down there. Because he used to see stuff in the corner of his eye and that. And I, cause I said, it's me. Can you see, I'm here. I'm literally, you're talking to me. I said, like, oh yeah. <laughs> I was like, but I, I don't know. I mean, I've never seen, I had one experience when I was, poor. Oh, I was, I heard voices. I mean, it's happened a few times in my life, so I don't know. Um, kind of, yeah. But there was one time when I was in my bedroom in the family home when I was probably 14 and I was hearing voices, like external voices, sort of that freaked me out a bit well more than a bit but I don't know I don't know what that was um, I've got a theory I've got a theory that I've had and I know I'm self-centred and self-absorbed and all that I know that but there's a reason for it because I'm the most important person on the planet that's why <laughs> no that's not why 
I pretty I'm pretty sure that my well being mentally was very, very bad when I was young. To the point where, you know, I was too young for probably to get any help. They didn't know. But I remember certain things and it's like there's no way either I was drugged or I was having an episode. And I'm talking you know, at the age of like four or five. So, and some other stuff that I didn't know about until I kind of looked into it with how kids, how it could affect kids. So I'm just thinking, I don't know how much of that kind of stayed with me, how much I recovered from that. So yeah, cause I used to hear things, I used to hear voices sometimes, but not now, not now. No, shush, I'm talking, I'm doing the podcast. Shh. Not now, but um, <laughs> I think my voice, I don't, no I don't. I do hear things, but yeah, that's not, not, anyway, that wasn't the question. Ghosts, ghosts, I don't know. I mean, my step-grandmother told me that when her husband passed away, he visited her, sort of stood at the bottom of her bed, and I said, what did he, what did he say to you? He said, he asked me a question. I said, what? He said, uh, will you give me a divorce? <laughs> no, she didn't say He said, uh, he just wanted to see if I was okay. And grief and stuff, it can, human beings, it's, our brains are just so, you know, very, very finely balanced as it were so I don't know I really don't know I think it's fascinating I mean my biggest hope is because you look how many people have seen UFOs and have reported to have been even abducted by I know they, the, 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 the American government have tried to change the name now so it's no longer UFOs which was unidentified flying objects they now called them LMO, LMAs or something. Uh, some other, like, abbreviation or pseudonym or whatever they call it. And it's like, why? Don't take away UFO from us. Everyone knows what UFO means. Well, they know, I guess some people might not know what it stands for, but they know what it is. I hope with every ounce of of pus in one of my teenage boils that I I that there are aliens and I believe they walk amongst us I believe I am one to be fair but is it's just oh, it'd be brilliant so I'd love it during my lifetime I'd love to see I don't want to see an alien invasion you know, like Independence Day. But how cool it would it be if a spaceship just lands and it just, I mean, that would just be the coolest thing ever. It's like Elon Musk. I know he's not as popular as he used to be, um, but he said, someone asked him, because he, he's trying to create or set up a settlement on Mars because he believes that this, this world is going to come to an end at some point so he wants to have a settlement in Mars and someone said to him but you would travel to Mars would you, tra would you travel there knowing you couldn't return and he said yep so he would happily go to Mars knowing that he can never come back because they just don't have the the resources. Why they don't have the resources, I don't know. 
if you can get there, why can't you get back? Would be a question. And you say, yeah, but well, there's enough fuel and stuff. But yeah, but they can send the fuel in other space. I mean, why not send a hundred, a thousand spaceships all at the same time? Or one after another, all, all heading for Mars? Do it on a big scale. I mean, you know, launching, launching things into the air with big with big powered thrusters on the bottom of them seem to be quite popular in this world so why not like, like aim them towards Mars use that energy for something good I don't know if I want to live on Mars though I don't know what was the question? Have I ever had any spooky experiences? Well, I did once turn into a werewolf. But other than that, not really much. What's the next question? Oh, you want to know more about the werewolf? Okay. No, I used to think I was a werewolf. And I turned... Okay. Technically, I didn't turn into a werewolf. See, this is something that... These are kind of stories that I should keep to myself. And it might sound like I'm making it up. This is true. Absolutely true. Um, okay, I didn't turn into a werewolf. I don't think that I actually turned into a werewolf, okay? So don't don't call an ambulance or anything. But I believed... I believed that I was turning into a werewolf. And this is when I was in the Sea Cadets. So I was like 13 at the time. And I fell on the floor and I was... And just... There was no one around luckily and I really thought so it was a full moon actually I'm not sure if it was a full moon I think I was halfway being turned and I realised it was only a <laughs> it wasn't a full moon so I thought oh I just got up and dusted myself off and went to the sea cadets a little bit embarrassed no but I think it was a full moon and I genuinely thought I was turning into a werewolf so that was kind of a spooky experience. I found the house we lived in very unpleasant when I was the only one there. So I was right at the top of the stairs and on the top floor. And when there was no one there, it was weird. Oh, there was a spooky experience. Um, when we moved in, my dad laid a carpet in the living room and the carpet started rising on its own it rose on its own like in front of all of us so I think that was just <sighs> I don't know what it was actually but yeah it rose on its own which is a bit strange and what other things? Here's a spooky experience, but it wasn't really, but it freaked me out. So I come home probably from Sea Cadets, probably. I don't know. I'd been out somewhere, so probably it was Sea Cadets. Come home. I'm like 12. No, I wouldn't have been 13. I was 12 when I turned into a werewolf. I was 11 and 12 when I was in the Sea Cadets. Yeah, and I felt I started karate when I was 13. So I went to... Oh, where did I go to? Yeah, I don't know where I'd been anyway. I come home and I see my stepmom. And she's sitting there. But she's not sitting like anywhere normal. She's sitting on the... The like the first landed on a chair and she's just staring at me no expression on her face no movement no facial movement at all just staring at me and freaked me out I mean, really upset me 
and I said, what? I didn't know what, and she was, but then she was pointing, so the rest of her body was working, and she was pointing at her face, like, what? Like charades, but she was not moving her face. It turned out that she had a face pack on, like a clear one, so it wasn't like muddy or anything, and, but it was clear, so I couldn't see that she had anything on, and she was waiting for it to set, and then she started peeling the skin off, which was even weird, weirder, because the, it was like skin peeling, really unsettled me that did, because I didn't know what it was to start with, and I'm trying to think what other things, Yeah, I used to... Unsettling. What was the question? Have you ever had any spooky experiences? I know that technically wasn't a spooky experience, but it was definitely spooky. It was definitely, a, it's, yeah, to me, it felt spooky-ish. There was one time when I watched the... There was a program called Something About Aliens... And it was about this kid who was an alien. They came down. Very weird program. It was for kids. Scary. Even now, it would be scary to watch. If you watch, it's on YouTube. You can see it. If it was a kid that fell to earth or something like that, I don't know. Scary. Freaky. Because they kind of like had, I think they had very pale skin and they didn't have much facial expressions and, and, but anyway, the bloke was the baddie. The kid was running away from this man. And I remember me and my friend or whatever, we were, we were playing chase or hide and seek, or maybe I was with my brothers, I don't know, in the gardens. There was like these gardens near the sea, like hills and you know all that stuff. And there was this like little hut at the top. Well, I come running and I bump, well, don't have physically bump into him, but there's a bloke with a raincoat. And to me, he looked exactly like that man from the TV show. And I'm not sure if I screamed, but I definitely ran. And yeah, so that was weird. That was definitely a weird, that was, that was spooky. Because I thought it was him from the TV show. Which was weird. Because. At that point I was about 43. <laughs> um, yeah so. That was weird. Other spooky things. Uh, okay. This is a spooky thing. But again it was. I don't know what it was I was about I was very young it's one of my earliest memories very young I'm talking four maybe maybe five four five and I think we were living in a house but it might have been in a block of flats but probably in Newcastle I was in a bedroom I don't remember if, if my brothers were in there or not but there was like a party going on outside so I assume my mother and had people around and they were just all dancing and there was music and they were doing whatever they were doing I was a, I was a little kid so I was in bed I woke up and the the wallpaper was moving. So the wallpaper was moving around on its own. And I was terrified. So I came outside and was sort of well, screaming, I guess. And I think they all found it funny. And I was put back into the room. So that was it. But I remember that. 
I think I had my eyes closed so I didn't have to look but I could see literally the, the wallpaper was moving um, like the patterns were moving around and stuff so that was really strange that was a very very unusual thing another spooky thing that happened is <laughs> I can't believe so many spooky things again around the same sort of time but I was at school at this point so I must have been about five um, maybe six blimey five maybe I was maybe I was at the maybe I wasn't at school no I was I think I was possibly no I was at school but I might have been at the children's home at this point maybe in Newcastle so I was at this school and this I'm at the gates inside the gates and everyone else is gone and I remember there was a tree and maybe a couple of trees and this woman was standing there and she fell over she collapsed and I thought that I'd done it and I ran off and I left her I didn't do anything I don't know I might have told someone but I kind of just ran because I didn't want to get in trouble because I thought I'd done it I'd caused it with my mind caused <laughs> to to fall over and so that was weird I still remember it I mean maybe it was maybe it was someone I knew because she was just outside the fence staring at me so I don't know she was probably a parent dropping a kid off and maybe she was I mean she wasn't looking at a mobile phone because it didn't exist back then but who knows so that was that was spooky I know it's not really spooky but it was freaky freaky I had it is is kind of not spooky but it's kind of a weird thing I met this little girl when I was a little boy I should put that in shouldn't I she I get yeah she was the same age as me I was in junior school so I was what seven I saw her met her on the beach during the summer so we'd only just moved there with my dad and his and his wife so we just moved from the kids home and she I met her I think it was with my brothers we was on the beach coming to the end of summer a really good summer apart from Elvis passing away other than that it was quite a good summer very hot you know so it was, it was, it was nice so it was like the last weekend before going back to school or starting the new school really for me and I met this girl and we were playing near the near the sea and just really liked her and she seemed to like me and and then I said oh bye and I think my brother said come on we've got to go home we have to eat or something I can't remember what it was play school's on so I said okay and I left and I thought I'm never going to see her again I love her and I think I dreamt about her that night turn up at school she's in my class and I didn't know anyone I'd never been to school in that town before and she was in my class and that was a kind of a weird coincidence it's kind of because I dreamt about her that night because she was I guess really I just she was like a friend probably the first friend I'd made in that town and it just happened to be female and I loved her <laughs> I did I loved her yes and don't bear in mind I'd, I'd kind of lost my girlfriend um because I had a girlfriend in the children's home a little black girl who she had I think quite she had she, they, they were the only other family that had siblings so I had my two brothers she had I think her two sisters 
So it's kind of a similar kind of thing going on. And they were older, so me and her were the youngest. She might have been a little bit younger than me, but not a lot. She might have actually been a bit older than me. But um, I remember I was... Oh, her mum turned up. One of the scariest people I've ever seen in my life at that point. Oh, man. And it's weird because the nuns... They weren't scared of nothing. <laughs> and, I mean, it's not always a good thing, but in that situation it was. Because she, this, this lady came in and she was absolutely renting. I'd never heard that kind of language before. And that I could remember anyway. And the nuns just like, they wouldn't back down. They just like, no, we're not coming in. And that was it. She couldn't. They. St oh. I think that was the same day that I got my book, my Jack and Ori book. Because normally the public didn't come into the, the premises. Um, but they had a fate or like a jumble sale. So. And the nuns wouldn't normally be out in the garden. And we all had all this stuff set up on tables, books and stuff that the public had handed in to give to raise money for I don't know what for. So that's when I got the the book. I don't still have it, but I do have a version of it. But not the original one that I had. Which would be cool. But I do have it. It's a Jack and Ori story about Jack. Yeah. I'm trying to think of any other weird, uh, spooky things. Um, hmm. 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 No, I don't think there is anything. I can't think. There probably is, but I can't off the top of me mind think of anything um eh. spooky so that's that one um and wants to know what's your middle name what do you want it to be uh my middle name begins of r that's all i'm going to say r r r r r Bah. See, that's it. That's all I'm going to give you. I tell you everything else, but I'm not giving you my middle name. I might have already done it in the past, but it's R. It might be Randolph. It might be Runicles. It might be. I can't think of any names beginning with R. Rupert could be Rupert, Rupert the Bear, Rupert, Rupert the Bear, um, Ricardo, Ricardo, Ricardo. I don't know. I'm still trying to think about if there's if there's any other spooky things. Oh, there was one spooky... Okay. I... It's weird. There was this... Uh, every now and then, I get a little bit... Oh, and then I do the, do the ride. Turn around. Every now and then. There was... I got sent to my room. So I was probably 11. Maybe 10. 11. 10. 11, something like that, 10, and I screamed the house down, I don't know why I was sent to the room, into my room, I don't know what I'd done, I clearly didn't agree with it, I don't know what I was, what I'd done naughty to be sent to the room, but I was sent to my bedroom, and 
eventually I calm down. And I think I might have just said the wrong thing. It's happened a few times. And I, I still remember this. I remember staring in the mirror. So I had this mirror, which was basically, I had this little this desk thing that opened up. So, and I could use it. So maybe I was 11, blimey. Oh, anyway, I had this mirror that I could look into. Which is what mirrors are for, isn't it, really? We know how to use mirrors. Okay, fair enough. So I'm looking into this mirror and my face morphed into my mum's face. So that was weird. That was strange. So that's the first... I don't remember that really happening before. Um, and it was... That was at a point when I could still remember what my mum looked like. I don't I don't know it anymore. I know she had glasses and dark hair. Um but she which explains probably why I got glasses and well dark hair. My dad had dark hair. So yeah, I think glasses were probably Blimey. No, it's, every now and then I forget that my eyesight ain't, ain't so great. But you know what? A lot of intellectuals <laughs> have uh, eyesight issues. And then there's me. Couldn't, oh, I, I saw this documentary. Couldn't believe it. They'd. This. Uh, anyway, it's just. It's just the, the, the this ruler of this uh, horrible incident, this horrible thing that went on, he was so dumb that he decided that anyone that was wearing glasses was too intelligent and it had to be gone. It's like I've met enough people that wear glasses to know. Well, I'm I, myself. You know, just because someone's wearing glasses. The only thing it means is they need to wear glasses. They have vision issues. That's all it means. It doesn't mean anything else. That was weird though, just seeing my face morph into her. Let's see her glasses and everything. So I didn't wear glasses until I was 15. at all until I was 15 but um, yeah that was strange I can't think of any other f okay there's a couple of things there was we were in Dover once and I was just walking through the beach and I kept hearing my name being shouted out but I kept looking I couldn't see anyone do it couldn't see anyone but I just kept hearing my name like being, I could hear it outside. I could hear someone shouting my name. So that was that one time. That was weird. Another time, I, I think I was spiked, but I don't know. I, I hope I was, just for the simple fact that what happened next was way too weird to have happened if I hadn't been spiked. Um, but it would have been with. I had, a, I had a cup of tea and I think they might have given me some weird stuff in the tea and there's some people that I was staying with when I was about uh, 18 well I went for a walk afterwards and I was gone for about 6 hours apparently they were driving around trying to find me and I was walking on the beach for 6 hours and I was hearing people I was Really, you know, it's, it was the weirdest, one of the weirdest experiences I've ever had in my life. And, yeah, that's very, very, wasn't enjoyable at all, whatever that was. So that was spooky. That was kind of a spooky thing. Um, 
Yeah, no, I think that's it. I can't, I don't think there's any, not really much has happened. I'm trying to think. Like spooky, spooky. Um, I tell you what was weird. It freaked me out. It's not so much spooky, but where I used to live when I was a kid, like in the family home before I left school, my window faced against a brick wall. Seriously, there was no light. There was a little bit of light, but it was a br brick wall, basically. My, my, it was ridiculous. I mean, why would you have a room with a window facing a brick wall? It just doesn't make sense. I'm guessing the, that building, my house, or the house I was living in, was there first, and they built, because uh, it was semi-detached. So there was a, a building next to it, obviously like it's semi-detached but maybe there was nothing next to it that side and then they built it and whatever but the it was an alleyway between the two buildings so we had a fence and it kind of it was an alleyway it was our alleyway so you had their wall of their house and the wall of our house and walk down it and that would take us out of the back garden onto the front well I'm leaving the school one day I'm going out the back and there are thousands upon thousands of flies all the way up the wall both sides I've never since seen anything like it. it completely freaked me out so I go running in I sort of to tell my stepmom you know it's like but I had to go to school so I never really got to sort of find out what happened well I did but like I wasn't allowed to stick around it turned out that my dad had found a uh, uh, an animal that needed to be buried so he buried it there in just because it was like there was the paving and then there was a bit of I guess dirt down one side so he, he buried it there which attracted the flies but I've never seen so many flies ever I mean I'm talking thousands and thousands of flies blue bottles so many so yeah that was uh, that's what that was um, I think he dug it up and put it somewhere else maybe stuck it in the freezer I don't know I don't know <laughs> blimey so yeah that was freaky that was spooky as a sense of like oh my gosh what on earth is this this is just beyond 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 um, there was a well washed up on the, on the beach once that was freaky but I guess not spooky but it was definitely a very weird thing to see because unless you've ever stood next to a well it's really hard to grasp the size just the sheer size of those things. Um, another thing that was really, it freaked me out. It wasn't spooky, but it was freaky. We had a freak wave, two freak waves in probably, I don't know, 77, 78, I don't know, something like that. We were on the beach, it was summer. And you could see this wave. I still dream about this, even now, every now and then. This wave, this thing was coming towards the beach from out at sea. And you could, without even knowing, you could see it was a wave. 
and it was high. And I was pretty much frozen, to be fair. And my dad grabbed me, my little brother, because I think my my little bra- my little brother was a baby at the time, so probably maybe I was nine. But maybe he wasn't born yet, I don't know. But he grabbed, he grabbed us. And my brothers, and he basically, he's like, I think he grabbed all of us all in one go and ran onto the prom and over the wall. And before the, the, the wave came over, and the wave went all right over the beach and into the road opposite. I mean, bear in mind I was little, so to me it looked like about a hundred, hundred foot long or a hundred foot high. It probably wasn't. I mean, I'm yeah, pretty certain it wasn't. But there was two of them. There was another one came as well, and I've never seen ever even since. I've never seen a waves as large as those in real life. They were huge huge waves and apparently the cause of it was in the channel not far out from the beach uh, potentially two waves hit each other like from the side or whatever and caused that ripple to come in but yeah that was freaky Yeah, I can't think of anything else. I like some of the uh, animated movies, you know, like Toy Story and Shrek. I like some of those movies as well. I've still got my favourites though, like, although I won't watch them very often, but like, you know, Grease. It's a Wonderful Life, Naked Gun, you know, there's a few, The Wanderers, Groundhog Day, Airplane, Life of Brian, you know, there's some movies that will just always be on my list of comedies that I loved but you can't can't watch them too often because they just lose I mean I, I think I must know the entire film the airplane movie I must know every single word that's said in that movie having watched it so many times during my lifetime it's so hot in here man so yeah this has got in a weird direction but um, I hope it was okay <laughs> that's what happens sometimes so I'm going to go thank you for your questions Chris, Michelle and Anne I'm not sure if I've even answered them correctly but thank you and I'll do another one next week. Maybe I'll have a few more questions and that'll distract me more. I don't know. Um, Yeah, so I'm going to go now. Thank you for listening. Please remember to be kind to yourself. Be gentle with yourself. Because you do deserve to be happy. Maybe do something special for yourself today or tomorrow. It doesn't have to be something that costs money. Just, just find something that you enjoy. Whether it's taking a long bath or watching something on television that you like to watch. Perhaps treating yourself to ha- to something to eat that you like to eat. Whatever it is that you enjoy, just maybe do that. 
do something nice for yourself. So I'm off. Take care. Lots of love. LOL. Bye. Relax. In a more deep and meaningful way. Maybe in a way that can not just allow you to feel calmer now and throughout the time we spend together here. Not just relaxed at the end of the recording when it's finished and you can enjoy that sense of comfort and peace. But also I think it would be nice to have those feelings of relaxation continue for longer after the recording is ended. So that you can still benefit from listening to my voice. Maybe in a few hours time. Perhaps tomorrow. And then by listening regularly. Especially if you find. Like some people do. And myself as well. I. Sometimes I'll find one particular recording that really resonates with me. And I'll just listen to it over and over again. Like every morning, every evening. There was this recording from we're going back to about 1999. It, was a, it wasn't hypnosis, but it was a guided visualisation. So it kind of was hypnosis, really. And I managed to find it again. And it still has the same effect on me. And part of it was... person's voice relaxed me. Just felt so peaceful. And I'd look forward to listening to her in the morning and in the evening. And I knew before even pressing the play button that as soon as I'd done that pressed the play button this was in the days of CD players press the play button in fact it might have even been a tape tape recorder I'd lie down on the bed and then even without necessarily listening to her words because I had them memorized really It was as if my body knew exactly what to do. 
and the muscles just almost went into automatic relaxation. And I remember my mind would slow down. Now, now, I was, I was listening to this recording in the early days of learning hypnosis and long before I ever made any videos or audio recordings myself because I didn't start doing that till 2006. But I knew, I knew how helpful I found being able to just let go to have that trust in the person that I'm listening to. Knowing that it's going to be just as relaxing, if, if not more so, each time you hear my voice. You may feel the same. Some people have been listening to me for over a decade. Maybe not solidly, obviously not 24 hours a day, but Maybe people come back. Some people maybe listen every day. And something that I do, which you may not realize by listening. is when I record these recordings now for example I also am affected by the words that I say So if I said to you, focus on your feet, notice your feet relaxing, I will be focusing on my feet. I will be noticing my feet relaxing. If I said focus on your hands and maybe notice the difference between each hand, perhaps notice the, the air in the room, the temperature of the room on the backs of your hands. You may start to notice what almost feels like a very light breeze. Even though there may not be any type of breeze at all where you are right now. I 
And as you become aware of your hands, I'm also aware of how relaxed my hands are feeling now. comes to potentially drifting off to sleep, which may be the reason you're listening. I also feel drowsy when I make these recordings. I also notice my mind drifting. In fact, at times, I've actually fallen asleep. Without even noticing. And then I carry on talking. And it's only when I listen back to do the editing, I hear snoring. And I think, I don't remember snoring. I remember talking. Is it snoring or is a pig turned up? That's what I sound like when I snore. And I get really into the whole experience. I don't know how you feel. How relaxed you feel in your feet. How relaxed you feel in your hands. I have noticed more and more that the more relaxed deeper level of comfort you feel the easier your breathing becomes It's almost like that additional muscle relaxation. This allows you to breathe easier. without necessarily focusing on your breath. However, being able to notice ease in which
You breathe so naturally. You breathe so very easily and smoothly. My breathing, improving, when I've got my eyes closed. I tend to visualize beautiful field with trees and flowers producing all that life-giving oxygen. Feels nice. To, if nothing else, just taking some time away from everything. Enjoying that feeling of peace, serenity. with a joyful heart. Time seems to just Drip by so very slowly. completely unattached to any thoughts whatsoever in this moment.
completely free. Noticing that your mind has slowed down slowed down. Because nothing really requires your attention. You can enjoy physical sensations of allowing the stress to drip out of your body. Drip in out of every part of your body. And being released from your brain and your mind. Slowly but surely the muscles in your legs Pleasant feelings in your arms and shoulders. Deepening each part of your body. 
leve. And deeper. And deeper. Noticing the feelings in the back of your neck. Feelings in your wrists, Muscles in the front of your body, are also feeling. Deeply There's a sense of peace Spreads through your very core. Even when you focus on your mind, your mind becomes even slower. So very slow. You 
your stomach. Notice how relaxed you now feel. spine, from your brain all the way down the middle of your back, sending and receiving millions of messages every day. Deeply relaxed. Spreading those signals down your spinal cord into every part of your body. Your shins and your calf muscles. Feelings of peace and tranquility spreading through your body.
tips of your toes to your eyes, your fingers, all the way to your lower back. Just wandering away. Happy to let go. Let go. Completely. Let go. So tranquil. Your whole body. Joy and a sense of letting go. Even more.
enjoying the space, this space of peace and safety. Letting go. Maybe we can just focus on the different parts of your body. Just to notice your forehead and your eyes. So loose. Noticing a sense of Complete freedom. Absolute freedom.
to him. have noticed your mind drifting Peaceful. Blissful peace. Blissful peace.
total peace. Letting go. body body feels almost invisible. And you could start to notice that you are feeling more relaxed. Even though I've not purposely focused your mind upon that sense of physical comfort that is growing within you throughout your body. And your mind starts to slow down. And that could be almost in recognition of, I guess, my speech not being particularly fast.
and things just generally feel calmer just by listening to my voice you give yourself a, an opportunity to take a break from the day take a break from your life as it is and to give yourself a rest giving yourself permission to take some time off and to allow your body to relax and allow your mind to slow down which in turn releases the tension any stresses that you had in your body it's almost as if the parts of your body just open up allowing the negativity out and at the same time replacing that negativity with positive healing energy which then fills your body up and your mind to also starts to appreciate those feelings of increasing confidence and an almost uplifting feeling positive healing an energy that spreads through your body like a wave of comfort and all this comes from just allowing yourself a few minutes maybe half an hour however long you want it to be to just rest and allow your mind and your body to almost reset itself to the, to the settings of comfort and relaxation calmness which allows more room for feelings of pleasure and happiness to move around your body and into your mind almost as if your mind and your body are sinking together almost mirroring each other with that growing positivity and calmness And it feels nice. It really does feel nice to know that you are the one that has allowed yourself to feel more comfort and to experience more of this deep relaxation spreading throughout your body and as I focus on each part of your body 
you can notice that that part becomes even more relaxed just by focusing on it becomes even more calm and comfortable just by focusing and as I move down your body starting at your head the parts that you've already focused on will continue to relax deeply and those parts that we've not yet focused on will just automatically release any remaining tension in anticipation of even more comfort about to come now I'm going to start by focusing on your forehead just being aware of the feelings of your forehead And any background sounds like Mr. Herbert the Pigeon can just allow you to feel even more relaxed. It just means you're in the moment. This isn't this isn't a sterile environment. This is the world. I live in the countryside. So there's lots of nature sounds around. So as you focus on your forehead, just notice how it becomes even more relaxed as you focus only on my voice and that part of your body. Moving down to your eyes, focusing on your eyes, noticing how the, your eyelids feel so heavy, yet so light at the same time, and all the muscles around your eyes relaxing. Completely moving your focus down to your mouth, your lips, your tongue, your teeth, and your gums, and the whole of your mouth relaxing. Focus now on your jaw, not just the part of your jaw near your mouth, or your chin, but all the way up the sides of your face to your ears, that whole of your jaw, feeling in on your neck, the front of your neck and your throat, relaxing and loose and calm, the sides of your neck, the right and left side of your neck. Focus.
focus in on the back of your neck. Letting go of any tension that may have been there before. And enjoying that sense of increasing comfort and release that you can experience in the back of your neck. Moving down your back, moving either side of your spine, right from the top of your back, all the way down to the bottom of your back. down to your lower back, and as you move up and down your spine, you can feel the muscles either side of your spine relaxing even more. As those muscles relax, that sense of comfort starts to spread outwards from your spine into both sides of your back. The top of your back, the middle and your lower back. And as you scan gently and slowly up and down your back as the muscles in the top of your back relax and become looser. The muscles in the middle of your back also seem to just almost divide from each other separating and almost melting. And in your lower back, there seems to be an extra special feeling of comfort. spreads into your hips, so down your lower back into your hips, into the area where your coccyx are, and into your buttocks, and all those muscles that spread in your lower back to your hip area, start to melt, start to really let go, and you know we're about to focus on your shoulders, your back and your spine. Continue to let go, continue to relax, so calmly, and as you focus on your shoulders, you may notice that they're already feeling really loose, they're already feeling calm, and they're feeling 
those muscles that move from your neck into your shoulders. so soft and gentle, so smooth, and calm, and the feeling in your shoulders seems to spread deep into your shoulders that sense of relaxation not just traveling deeply into your muscles but also relaxing bones, and moving all the way to underneath your arms, relaxing that whole area between the tops of your shoulders and underneath your arms, healing. so relaxed and comfortable in your shoulders, which sends that deep healing message. You may feel almost as if your arms are not even there because they're so relaxed, so deeply relaxed. So spreading all the way down your arms to your elbows, including your elbows, circumference spread forearms and your wrists feeling so heavy yet at the same time so light and gentle Focus in. 
a sense of real peace. It just seems to feel so familiar. tips to the front of your body muscles in your thighs your knees
muscles and your shins completely I'm going to start counting down now from 20 down to 1. You can imagine, in a way, it's like just walking down some steps, and each step, all 20 steps, and each step represents a level of comfort. Each step repre 
presents a deepening of that comfort. And the further you, you walk down those steps, the deeper and more relaxed you feel. So, starting with number 20. Seventeen. Sixteen.
14. Thirteen.
as you focus on your eyes. I'm going to count down from ten down to one. Focus in just on your eyes. Your eyelids, the muscles around your eyes, your eyeballs themselves, that whole area that makes up your eye. And as we count down from ten, down to one, whilst focusing on your eyes, you will become twice as relaxed with each number counting down, and you may find do is just drift off to sleep and if that's what you want then just allow yourself to do that now focus in on your eyes to begin counting down from ten down to one right now ten
오. So counting down from ten to one, ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four. Three, two, one. And maybe that was a bit too quick in order to relax. Maybe it's a bit too fast for you to notice the calming of your body. Maybe even a little bit of pressure there like 
and you're counting down from 10 to 1. What do you expect me to do, man? You expect me just to go all floppy just because you're counting down? You could try it again, but this time I'll go a bit slower. This time, as you focus on the whole of your body, before we focus on your legs, just notice how your body does start to feel more relaxed. With every number that I count down, ten. Seven, six, five, four. just notice how how you feel generally how your body feels it's not necessarily even about counting down from 10 to 1 it's that space that you have that space between being active physically or mentally to just sitting or lying down and just being there not doing anything not saying anything not needing to think think about anything so it, op it opens up a space you know a bit of a space a gap and the more I count down from 10 to 1 the bigger that gap becomes so there's that gap of calmness of comfort, of relaxation. It's a nice feeling. And it moves those stresses or discomforts physically or emotionally, moves them away. allows you to just slow down. So I'm going to count again from 10 down to 1 and notice that gap widening. The gap. 
gap. And as it widens, it's almost like the the stress and the tension falls into the gap. It gives you that distance, that space. Seven, six, five. Three. How does your body feel now? Can you notice the, that you're feeling calmer? Feeling more relaxed. As we now focus on the legs. Just your legs. We're just going to start with focusing on your thighs. course it's not the most exciting thing to be doing because I'm, I'm sure like most of your body there's not a lot going on right now just focusing on the whole of your thighs the tops of your thighs the sides of your thighs, the bottoms of your thighs, your outer thighs and your inner thighs. Basically the whole of your thigh that leads into your hip. And then 
goes down to your knee joints. Now this is a big area. It's a very heavy area. It's very strong. Probably the strongest muscles in your body are in your thighs. I don't think we perhaps give enough attention to our thighs. Perhaps we don't acknowledge how important our thighs are to our lives. how much they actually do for us all through our lives. And it may, it may seem, sound really weird, but I think that all of our body parts, especially our thighs, need some TLC a bit of love shown a bit of acknowledgement a thank you gratitude for what our thighs do for us And I know this may sound a bit strange. Maybe you think, why am I? Surely I should be out in, in the garden hugging a tree or something. Well, it's hard to set a microphone up on a tree. That's why I'm doing this indoors. Otherwise, I would be outside hugging a tree. No, I can't see the television from the tree. You move down to your knees, again such an important part, and I think we don't necessarily, I'll speak for myself here, I don't necessarily appreciate all that my knees do for me until I have a problem with my knee, so occasionally if I have a Maybe I bash it or it's aching for some reason. It's then that I realise how much it does. You know, the benefit of being able to use my legs without any kind of physical discomfort is a beautiful thing. That's possibly not appreciated until it's temporarily removed you know that comfort but as you focus on your knees regardless of how your knees feel you can have that sense of gratitude and love to your knees for all that they do for you you can still have that attention on your thighs maybe notice how your thighs feel maybe you've noticed that they are relaxing more deeply as you focus now on the bottoms of your legs, the shins, 
and the calf muscles, the bones between your knees and your feet. Incorporating, of course, your ankles. So important. You know, you want its head, even the, like the slightest sprain of an ankle, knows how how much we take our ankles for granted. And it's kind of strange in a way when you think that, you know, logically our wrists are a lot thinner than the rest of our arms, which is, okay, doesn't, can't see any problem with that, because we're just picking stuff up. But our ankles are so much thinner than the rest of our legs. And from a physics perspective, or logical even, it doesn't really make sense that all this weight would ultimately be resting on your ankles, then leading to your feet. That thin area, thin bone. Yet it does so much great work. Supports us, supports our body for a lifetime. Helps us to balance. Helps you to get around and be mobile. It's the calf muscles, of course. When I was younger, I couldn't see the point in calf muscles. It didn't seem to do anything. Like, okay, if I walked around on tiptoes, then my calf muscles get some work. But of course, that's not true. The calf muscles are being used whenever we use our legs. And your shins, there to protect your lower legs, shaped in a way almost as a protector for the bone. Leading, of course, to your ankles. And your feet. But we're not going to focus on your feet. We're just going to focus on the legs. And I realise. That now that I've mentioned your feet. You're probably. Focusing on them anyway. So maybe I should focus on your feet a little bit. You can have them in your awareness. The same as you have your thighs in your awareness, even though we haven't been focusing on your thighs for a few minutes. You've been focusing on your ankles. There's still that sensation of comfort in your thighs. It's that movement of energy because the thighs hold lots of different sensations. Of course, there's the muscles, the big, strong muscles that we have in our thighs. But the skin on the outside of the thighs, as in the outside of all of our body, can be very sensitive. 
sensitive to the touch, sensitive to temperature. And inside your thighs, the bones, there's the muscle, there's the blood vessels, the arteries. So all this stuff that's inside your thighs. And I guess sometimes it'd be nice if you could actually put your fingers inside your thighs and massage. So you can massage on the outside, of course, but to be able to get deep into the muscles, to be able to just massage inside your thighs, massaging the bones of your leg, massaging all the veins and just gently healing your thighs. You could move down, massaging inside your knees, just massaging those bones, but with healing fingertips, spreading that healing energy deep into the joints of your knees. And of course, there's the back of your your knee, you know, the inside crease where your knee is. It's a very sensitive area. Very feels very nice when you stroke it. That might be because it's an area that's not really touched very often. It's almost like a hidden part, that crease in your legs. It's almost like a part that has a, a sensitivity which is a little bit different. Of course it's protected by your legs. So you can imagine putting your fingers into that crease in your legs. Fold in between your legs. You can just massage with your fingertips. Imagine your fingertips going inside, massaging the muscle tissue. You can, of course, feel the the bones of your knees healing through your fingertips. And then as you go down to your calf muscles, now that's a part I'd like to be able to really put my fingertips deep inside my calf muscles, massaging every single tissue of that muscle, healing every part. Doing the same for my shins, just massaging and gently stroking the bones, gently stroking them, healing them in a loving way because they deserve to be treated as the precious bones that they are because our legs are so precious as in all the other parts of our body. They're more precious than any jewel on the planet. And when you start to think about your legs in this way, it can change your perspective. It might sound a bit, a bit silly to start with, 
the idea of having love for your legs, showing appreciation for your thighs, wanting to be able to put your hands in your thighs and massage the muscles in the bones and to get your fingers deep in there, releasing all tension. Just to show how much you care about your legs, how much you care for what your legs do for you regularly. Your knees, your calves, your ankles. The strength of your ankles considering how thin they are compared to the rest of your legs, especially your thighs. Yet they're so strong, so flexible, absolutely amazing things your ankles are. Truly a gift. Because of what they do for you. Supporting all that weight. Regardless of how what weight you are. Even if you're only 8 stone. Still a lot of weight. These little ankles. Now I'm a lot heavier than 8 stone. Double that. Yet my ankles support my body all the time. Although they do give off a sigh of relief when I sit down. As in fact my whole legs do. My feet, feet also go my toes clap I'm so happy your legs really are amazing and I know that talk about, talking about your legs is probably, possibly the, one of the most the most boring things you've ever heard anyone say, possibly. But boring or not, everything I said is true. Your legs are amazing. Your legs deserve not just respect, but they deserve to relax deeply. They deserve to take some time out of the day to just let go completely. Because the legs are so, such a most, you know, very important part of your body, when you relax your legs, the rest of your body also naturally follows in that 
journey of comfort. I can feel it in my hips. My hips feel really loose. And also my lower back as well. My lower back really feels, it feels stretched. Even though I'm just sitting in a chair and there's no stretching as far as I'm aware that I'm doing. But it's almost as if the muscles are just relaxed so much that there is a natural stretch as the tension has reduced a lot. down from 10 down to 1 and you can continue to feel wonderfully relaxed 10 9 8 7 I'm just going to count down from five down to one. And as I count down, if you just focus on the numbers, just the numbers, counting down, and notice how you feel in this moment as you hear the numbers counting down, knowing that those numbers counting down represent you feeling karma not just in your body but also relaxing your mind and just notice how you feel there's nothing to do there's nothing to say there's nothing to think about Starting with number five. Four. Three. One. As you notice the gradual letting go of the tension in your body. You may also begin to notice and be aware of how your mind is starting to slow down. This is just a natural thing that happens. It's not really a special procedure. It's just natural because as your body relaxes, your mind also starts to relax and the more 
your mind relaxes, the more your body relaxes. It's just a continuous circle of relaxation. And there's that calmness that comes from relative quietness. You know, even even if there's background sounds, either your side or mine, it's still going to be quite calm. You know, you haven't got the television on, there's no music in the background unless you're listening to the recording with music, of course. You're very likely not going to be sitting in a room with other people. Of course you might be, but generally it's more ideal if you can do this on your own. So, no distractions. And when you stop thinking about stuff, relaxation automatically rises. A sense of comfort starts to grow. And without trying to build it up into something fantastical or something magical, this is just a natural process, something that's easy to accomplish. In fact, it's almost you know, the sense of relaxing completely happens really when you put no effort into it. It's not something that you can really force. It's something that happens naturally and part of the process of this recording and others is simply to allow you to take advantage of this space, this time, to just let go, to just be here, to be in tune with how you feel. Yet with the intention of wanting to relax deeply. And maybe even to fall asleep depending on what it is that you wish for yourself in this moment. As we know, relaxing is the majority of the process of falling asleep. The actual falling asleep part is the tiny bit at the end, the deeper relaxed you become, the easier you find yourself drifting. You can also, if you choose, stay focused on my voice and really enjoy the process of gradually Relaxing each.
each muscle in your body. Effortlessly. And just observing the sensation of letting go. This time I'm going to count from six down to one. And you can notice your mind calming down more with each number that you hear me say. Two. slowed right down sink in deeply into relaxation As you focus on your mind, you may notice. 
notice that there are some thoughts still there, maybe some stubborn thoughts that for some reason perhaps need your attention. Send love to those thoughts. Sprinkle those thoughts with love. Like little petals from a flower. You just sprinkle it over them. Petals filled with love towards those thoughts. To let those thoughts know that you're not abandoning them, you just need them, you require them to just calm down, slow down, quiet down for now. as you focus on those remaining thoughts as we count down this time from seven down to one with each number just imagine sprinkling those flower petals of love kindness gratitude over those thoughts which will allow them to just melt away and relax deeply with every number those thoughts will become more in with number seven.
around you now. Notice how relaxed you're feeling in your body. I'm going to focus on your hands. Because the more relaxed your hands are, the more relaxed your body and mind are. you focus on your hands and your fingers there's nothing needed to be done there's no clenching of fists or tensing the fingers or anything like that it's just noticing Focusing on your hands. Noticing how they feel. Because the more your hands feel, the calmer your mind feels, and the more comfort you feel throughout your body. that your mind is starting to drift Just on your hands and fingers, allowing them to experience a real deepening of that relaxation. number from eight down to one you can almost feel that healing and relaxing energy spreading into your
starting with number eight. Seven. Just being here now. Nothing to think about. Nothing to do. Nothing to say. And everything just feels calmer. This is your natural state of being. This is how you just normally feel when you take away all of that other stuff that we add. You know, things like stress and worrying and overthinking and anxiety. generally thinking about stuff. When you 
take that away, which is what we do, what we're doing now. We're left with a real sense of peacefulness, which comes to you very quickly. Because ultimately, it's just a feeling. A feeling of comfort. It's almost as if you've gone inside yourself and you've found a special place where everything is peaceful. Place where you can feel relaxed and your natural sense of comfort. A place where you can be you. Where you can accept yourself for who you are. A place where you're not trying to anybody else ever a place where you can actually not just love yourself but in some ways more importantly you can like yourself appreciate who you are sense of gratitude is in the air all around you. And that's also a place where you can actually feel the healing energy soaking into your body. soaking into your body and that healing energy spreads through your veins traveling to each and every single part of your body start to realize that actually that healing energy has not just entered into your brain, it's become part of your brain. And that spinal fluid is now mixed with healing energy. not just allowing you to feel so much more relaxed and healthy in this moment, but also you start to realize that actually what's happening now with that healing relaxing energy spreading through your body is actually changing your life. It's actually changing the way you're going to feel, not just now, but tomorrow and the next day as your health improves. Not just your physical health, but your mental health. Things that used to bother you in the past, for some reason, no longer 
have the effect that they used to. Because something has changed deep within you. Maybe things that used to cause you to feel anger no longer have that power to control you the way they seem to be able to before. As you realize that you are the one who decides what affects you. You're the one who decides to feel relaxed and calm when you choose to enjoy noticing these natural developments of healing continuing to grow and improve your life day by day. Including of course your ability to relax so much easier and sleep in It's the most natural thing in the world to you. Because falling asleep is something that you've done so many times in your life. And you know that you were born, as we all were, with the ability to fall asleep naturally. We were born with that ability to just drift off into a deep healing sleep. Even when we're kids, sometimes we'll fall asleep when we don't even want to. We try to <laughs> stay awake. Maybe it's a birthday in the morning or it's Christmas or holiday or something we look forward to. We don't want to go to sleep. But the more we want to stay awake, the more we just start to drift. And the more you fight drifting, the more you try and stop yourself from drifting asleep. The deeper and stronger that drifting becomes. Because we're born not just with the need to relax deeply and to naturally fall asleep. But it's our birthright. It's part of our DNA. And sometimes as we get older in life, perhaps at times we have forgotten that relaxing completely it's not only a wonderfully pleasant experience, it's also really easy. It's very, very easy. 
permission to let go because that's all it is is just deciding to let go and when you press the play button on my recordings you have given permission for my voice to relax you when you press that play button you have given me permission for my words to affect you in a positive only a positive way opening up your mind to useful and healing suggestions can have such an amazing effect on how you feel right now as well as those changes that continue long after the recording ends changes within you that continue to flourish and grow transforming your life in a positive beautiful way allowing you to move forward in your life in the direction that you choose for yourself and this feeling this feeling that you can experience of safety comfort calmness This feels so nice. It's such a healthy place to be. And that positivity grows within you. to find that you're more relaxed physically and in your mind is more relaxed and it's not that you're thinking slower it's just that your mind will be less clogged up with unnecessary negativity because from now on your mind rejects negativity from now on you're going to start noticing when negativity arises you can just say stop stop and that negativity will turn around and leave you alone stop 
gusto and that negativity would disappear. And as you notice that you feel way more relaxed than you probably expected. You can now congratulate yourself because you're the person that has done this. You are the one that has opened your mind up to the simple facts that you can feel more relaxed in your body and in your mind. You've opened your mind up to the birthright of being able to just fall asleep easily when you choose. And that's a nice feeling, don't you think? Feels nice, doesn't it? To feel calm, with all that healing energy spreading through your body and your mind. To spend time in that that special place where negativity can no longer enter. Negativity is banned. It's barred. It's not allowed entry. Doesn't doesn't des- doesn't deserve to be here. Doesn't belong here. Negativity has no place in your life. makes room for more comfort, more healing, more relaxation, more peace. Feels nice, doesn't it? To just be let go of everything. And I'm going to count down now from twenty down to one. Continue to relax. If you choose, you can drift to sleep. With every number you hear me say, you can feel twice as relaxed. Or if you choose, you can feel twice as sleepy. Now, twenty. Eight. 
Eighteen. Seventeen. Sixteen. Fifth. This is your time to just take a break. Your time to relax, to allow your mind to slow down. To give yourself permission to take a break from everything and you're the only person that can make that decision. You're the only person that can actually tell your mind Just relax. To just take some time off. So that you can focus on your body getting in touch with you feel physically and in the process of this body scan where you focus on different parts of your body those parts focus on and observe, even though you're not purposely requesting for those parts of your body to relax, it's kind of expected, you expect when you listen to my voice to feel 
more relaxed, naturally. Because when you're listening to me, your attention is focused on my words. And as my words guide you to focus on those parts of your body, your focus increases. actually calms your mind and when your mind calms down your body relaxes started to focus on your body, you can already feel that healing energy spreading through your body, pushing out stress and tension. of your body, including your skin, your bones, your blood, all of your organs inside your body, all of the muscles, all of the fat, all of everything, every hair on your body is filled with that healing energy. feeling of comfort, of relaxation, increases. Deeply increases. In a way that starts to feel perhaps a bit drowsy, because it's not needed, and it may start needed. So if you're listening to this and what you need is deep relaxation, that's what you'll get. If what you need is to fall asleep naturally and easily as your mind drifts, that's also what will happen. by pressing
pressing that play button on the podcast and listening to me I give permission for your body and your mind in fact I give the command to your body and your mind to relax drift off to sleep, if that's what you want or need. And as I focus on the different parts of your body, Focusing on a different part of your body. And you may find yourself drifting. But you don't realize you're drifting until you stop drifting. Because that drifting is basically you already in the sleep zone. And the more you drift, the longer you drift, and the longer you drift, and eventually that drifting continues to sleep and that's the last you remember until you wake up in your own time when you experience the right amount of sleep for you if you want to be and if you do Sleep, it's extremely pleasant, so relaxing, so deep, healing sleep. Feel that healing energy spreading through you, relaxing you so deeply. Relaxing your soul so deeply. 
let's focus again on parts of your body. Focusing this time on your forehead. Now on your mouth, your lips, your tongue, the whole of your mouth. Focusing on the fingers. a little bit so you can focus on each one individually. Both hands. And even though as you focus on both of your hands now, they almost seem to just melt into one. your right hand start and your left hand end, almost as if they just mix together. Now focusing on the knees, just noticing how your knees feel. Focusing on your elbows, focusing in on both of your elbows, just observing the feeling of your elbows. Observing your ankles, feeling where the physical sensations in your ankles.
go letting go letting go letting go letting going to start now and I'd like you just first of all just to see yourself lying down on that massage table lying on your front your head is supported your arms are supported and you feel comfortable and breathing is really easy and you feel You feel confident in how you look as well. So there's none of that issue of body problems or shyness because I'm a professional and this is a therapy session. So none of that stuff matters whatsoever. This is about you. This is about how you feel and how you can enjoy that sense of comfort and relaxation that comes from letting go and allowing my hands and my fingers to relax you by massaging your body. I want to start off just by placing my hands on the back of your head, just gently, 
just so you can feel what my hands feel like really on you. So you can maybe feel the warmth of my hands on the back of your head. I'm going to move my hands to the side of your head. Not pressing, but just holding them there very gently. Maybe over your ears and a little bit on your face. Just so you can feel my hands. So you can become accustomed to them. And now put my hands on the back of your head again and gently let them slide down onto the back of your neck. You can feel my hands gently stroking the back of your neck to start with. Just so you can get used to the, the feeling of my hands on your skin. Get accustomed to it. Realize that you're safe and it's all good. It's all fine. And I'm going to start gently massaging the muscles in the back of your neck. both hands now this is a very trusting situation really because our necks are so fragile and to have someone have their hands around your neck in that way can sometimes be problematic for people which is why massages are quite good because it allows you to relax and to get in touch with trust, to feel peaceful and calm. And as I massage the sides of your neck gently. Moving from the bottom of your neck, which would be sort of near where your shoulders start, I guess, all the way up to your jaw, your ears kind of area, that side of your neck. Of course, is a lot longer than the front of your neck. Massaging the, the back of your neck, especially that area where perhaps we hold tension. And as that area is massaged, you can actually feel a sense of release in the back of your neck. And maybe you can breathe it out as well. Notice how it feels. Notice how you feel. Then moving down to that area between your neck and your shoulders. That muscly area. Starting to massage that area on both sides. I mean, this would be the area that a lot of people would massage if they were going to give you like a shoulder massage. Even that's not technically the shoulders, but it's all the muscles that lead to the shoulders. From the neck. And again, that can hold tension and stress. 
and when massaged. Sometimes a nice deep massage is useful. And you decide how deep that massage is. And just allow the knuckles just to dig in to get to those muscles and to really relax them. All the time being firm yet gentle with you. And just stroking down that area to your actual shoulders. Move into the muscles of your shoulders. And maybe initially just pulling up the shoulders a little bit off the table just to give you a little bit of a stretch, but very gently. And you've got the muscles at the front of your shoulders, the sides and the back. This is a part that can really take quite a bit of pressure, quite a bit of uh, kneading, if, if you wish, to really release the tension, to really get into those muscles and let your fingers in there. And it can feel really nice. Sometimes it's just being stroked gently or being massaged quite strongly. It can all be beneficial to the relaxation. Of the muscles in your shoulders. Now to move down your arms. We do one arm at a time, starting with your right arm. What I'll do is I'll just lift your arm up, just hold it to the side of you. I want it to still be attached. And I just massage the tops of your arms. All the way down to your forearms, into your wrists. Gently massaging that part, the softer part, which is the under part of the arm, which leads to the crease in your elbow, the inside. It's much more sensitive skin. Sometimes just having that stroked can feel really nice, pleasurable and relaxing. Now moving down to your right hand. Just holding your hand with a 
both of my hands. Just pressing gently on the back of your hand and stretching your fingers ever so lightly. At the same time, pressing down and massaging each finger. And then starting to massage the palms of your hands. Just turning the hand gently, stretching it gently. And actually having your hand held can really be an emotional experience sometimes, even if it is with a stranger, someone you don't know very well, like a massage person or a therapist maybe, because it's intimate. feel nice and you can feel safe and as I put that right arm back down where it was and then do the same with your left arm exactly the same Massaging the muscles in your arm all the way down to your wrist. Stroking the inside of your arm. Just being gentle or as firm as you require. Massaging your left hand. Stretching the fingers gently. Massaging the palm of your left hand. So, so relaxing. So comforting. Now just rest your left arm back down. to massage your back, the biggest part of your body, starting at the top, starting again where we already be, been, that area at the top and between your shoulders, near your neck, going back, massaging that area again. This time moving downwards. Making a downward stroke to the middle of your back. Working from the outside inwards. So massaging the your back but the the outsides of your back. parts where your arms would maybe rest against almost the part that connects your front to your back and 
you just massage him down firmly but gently as firm as you want moving down and then moving across a little bit and moving all the way down again being very gentle and yet firm as you choose Eventually we get to the spine, we can massage the muscles on either side of your spine, from the top of your neck all the way down to your lower back. You can do that a few times, sometimes people use knuckle or the you know two fingers and just go either side of the spine almost just push down go all the way down to the bottom of the spine each time releasing tension and opening up the body stretching your body so that you feel more relaxed but at the same time rejuvenated and now I'm going to move to one side to your right side and from the bottom of your ribs to your pelvis, and we're going to massage that area of your back, I'll stretch over the other side and I'll pull the muscles gently, and massage and push from one end, that side all the way to my side, and to the middle in fact, to where your spine is, massaging that side of your spine the opposite side to where I'm standing. It's almost like kneading bread. There's that big area which is firm, yet lots there to massage. Potentially one of the most important places to actually have a massage because you really feel it, you really feel the release and the pleasure of having your lower back massaged, it releases so much from your body that's not useful, starting a healing process which will continue long after this recording is over. Massaging this part of your body not only feels really good for you, but it's actually fun to do because it is, as I said, like kneading bread. It's a part that you can really get a hold of and really massage deeply if that's your choice. move over to the other side of your body and do the same with the opposite part of your lower back, kneading and massaging from your sides all the way to the middle of your back where your spine is. Pressing and kneading. Firm and gentle at the same time. It feels so releasing. 
this mixture of pleasure, comfort, release, calmness, relaxation, all mixed together. Plus there's that feeling from your stomach as it's being stretched. Even though you're in your stomach now, you can feel it being stretched because that whole area is connected to your stomach. Now we're going to move, we'll move further up to your top of your body. And I'm going to do the same. This time, starting with your upper back, put my hands forward over and mass massage in that area up to your spine, from the side of your body up to your spine. So some of that massage area, the muscle tissue, uh, or whatever, fatty tissue even, will be possibly from your chest. So it's all connected, the chest and the back connect together. I'm going to be massaging and just pulling some of that skin from your side up and massaging that area of your upper back all the way to your spine. And then I'll move down a bit and I'll continue up the middle of your back doing exactly the same thing. As gentle or as deep as you choose. Now I'll move off the other side again and do the exact same thing with the top of your back on the other side from pretty much underneath your arm area really to your spine and then continuing that all the way down Including your lower, your middle of your back. Now I'm going to go to your thighs, the backs of your thighs, and the sides of your thighs. Starting with your right leg, massaging the back and the sides of your thighs, gently and firmly. There's a lot of muscles there. It's an area that can be very tense at times and maybe needs a little bit more pressure than the rest of the body. That's up to you. You can gently stroke the back of your legs where, you know, opposite your knee joint or underneath your knee joint. It's a very sensitive, gentle area. Then working down to your calf muscles, massaging your calf muscles thoroughly and deeply if you choose, using both hands and fingers digging deep. In the back of your back of your ankles, just 
gently massage in that area. Maybe lifting the leg and stretching it a little bit. Moving to the right foot. Massaging the bottom of your feet and the sides of your feet. Gently but firm enough so they don't tickle. And just allow the pleasure that you get from having your feet massaged to just overtake you. As I continue to massage your feet, the bottoms of your feet, the sides, your arches, your heel. You can put a lot of pressure into your heel and it feels amazing. Yet the arches need to be a bit more gentle. Stretching your toes gently and massaging the bottoms of your toes with my fingers each one individually. And moving over to the left leg to do exactly the same thing. Starting with the top of the thighs, working the back of the thighs and the sides. Massaging deeply and gently that whole area. Working all the way down. This is an area that maybe you could like to spend more time relaxing and massaging. Perhaps, if you wanted, I could make a future recording where I spend more time on one particular area. As you move down to your calf muscles. Massaging your calf muscles. Firmly and gently. Moving down your ankle and into your feet. Massaging the backs of your feet, bottoms of your feet. Stretching your toes and massaging each toe individually. And that feeling of pleasure and release that you experience when you're having your feet massaged feels really good. Turn over in your mind, laying on your back. I'm just going to start again at your neck area. In your shoulders. Just to 
get back in touch with that area. As you move up. I can clean my hands, make them all fresh, because now I'm going to massage your face gently. Starting off with your forehead. If your eyes are closed, and you can just stretch your eyes a little bit, pushing up on your eyebrows. And just massaging around your scalp. Massaging down your cheeks, around your ears, into your jaw, gently. The sides of your neck, chin. moving down from your neck down to your chest starting by massaging the very top of your chest where the collarbone is either side of the collarbone Just massaging the whole of the chest. Moving the chest around. Because it's quite a large area, you can move from one side to the next. Moving my hands underneath pretty much where your arms are. Stretching up. Stretching some of the muscles of your back in the process. Moving up over your chest. Just massage gently and slide down towards your stomach, starting in the middle of your chest. And then gradually my hands moving apart and massaging and sliding at the same time, moving down. Just below your rib cage. Moving down and massaging up again. Giving your chest all the attention that it needs to feel completely relaxed. So we're going to be focusing on your sides as well, an area that really doesn't get much attention, but feels really good when it's massaged. Just stroking my hands 
down the sides of your body, or just below your arms, all the way down to your hips. Now, move into your stomach area, and just stand one side of you, like I did when I did your lower back. We're going to do a similar process of just stretching the muscles from your side gently massaging from one side to the next moving that whole area from below your ribs all the way down below your belly button. I'm going to move around to the other side of you and repeat that. Process of relaxing deeply. you feel free there's something about having your stomach massaged that's different from any other part because we do have a tendency of holding a different kind of stress in our stomachs that we may not be aware of So now massage your stomach, the front of your stomach, making circles around your belly button, then going the other way around, with a gentleness and a freedom that comes from feeling how you're feeling. As I now move down the tops of your thighs, the muscles massaging them, and I can do this two legs at the same time, pressing down, massaging deeply, those muscles in your thighs, the front of your thighs. Moving down to your knees, gently massaging your knees. Sliding down your shins, putting pressure on either side of your shin, gently Softly, but firmly. Moving down to your ankles. Stroking the tops of your feet. And then with each foot in each hand, just gently massaging whole of the foot, the top, the bottom, your heel, your ankle, your toes, massaging every part of your feet, feels so good just to let go, enjoy the process. Enjoy feeling so deeply relaxed. So much comfort and so many feelings that come just from 
touching your skin. And you can just lie there as long as you choose. Enjoying the feeling of deep comfort and being massaged by me. Enjoy. do is blow out some candles in your mind. There are going to be a hundred candles. you're going to blow each one out individually, one by one, starting at a hundred as I count down, all the way down to one, and each time I say a number, can imagine that candle in front of you, and I'd like you to actually physically gently blow that candle out. Just, so it's not a big Low, it's just a gentle, and that candle will extinguish, and then I'll say the next number as we move down, and you can just blow that one out as well. As we move down the numbers, you'll find yourself feeling more and more relaxed. If you need to sleep, you also find yourself becoming incredibly tired and sleepy. In fact, you may struggle to blow out all 100 of these candles. As you feel
sounds where you are. You be aware of those sounds. Just not even notice them at all because they're unimportant. Where I am, I've got the sounds of the birds. Horace the pigeon that likes to say hello sometimes. And there's the odd plane that goes by. There could be traffic and trains in the distance. But none of that seems important. Whatsoever, the more candles you blow out, the less important anything is. The more candles you blow out, the further you seem to. say and then you blow that candle out too so easy so simple We're going to start by introducing the first candle, which is a hundred. First candle, which is one. Positivity growing within you. Relaxation and sleepiness. Expanding. Start 
to 67. Two. 
Candle. 
let go of all of those thoughts, worries, concerns about the past, thoughts about the future and even things you've been thinking about today. Just let it all go. Because none of it is useful in this moment. This is your opportunity to just focus on feeling relaxed, allowing yourself to get in touch with that natural sense of peace that we all have within us. It's available for everyone. It just sometimes takes a little bit of effort to set up the right time and place in order for you to just let go. Because when you do decide to let go and relax, that's what your body starts to do. Because you've chosen, you've chosen to just allow your body to unwind and your mind starts to slow down. And it's a nice feeling. It's a nice feeling at the beginning just to know that you have chosen to decide to, to relax deeply. And because you've made that decision, your body will just follow suit. Because sometimes all the muscles in your body need is just permission from you to relax. Because so often we're busy, we're going from here to there, we're walking around and we're doing stuff. And the body doesn't have any time or space to really relax deeply. So it kind of waits for you to lead the way. Waits for your permission. And when you do give your permission, and you give the say so, and even you say, okay, it's time for your body to let go completely and relax totally. Your body just follows. It's all like, like a breath of relief. Oh, good, I can now relax. That feeling at the end of a day, of a very physical day that you may experience in the past. Where you get home and you just sit down on a chair. Maybe you kick your shoes off and oh, it feels so nice. Knowing that you don't have to get up again for a little while at least. And if you choose, you can just sit there for maybe an hour or two. And it feels blissful. And just by sitting down like that, your body knows that it's time to relax. Your body has been given permission from you. Because it's a mindset where your mind, you're prepared to let go of everything. And just Allow all of the stress of your body to evaporate. And any 
tensions can just gradually vanish. It's almost like magic, really. Because that sense of relaxation in the body is a very natural state. It's not something unusual. It may feel unusual when you first start to relax if you if you haven't really spent a lot of time focusing and giving yourself this space to let go completely and relax. It may seem almost alien. But it isn't. It's actually the most natural thing in the world to let go completely, to relax totally. The most natural thing in the world to allow yourself to feel really calm in your mind. Is almost like a literal unwinding. It's like you press a button and all the tension just releases. And it's like a wheel, like a cog, like the inside of the clock just unwinding. And it's almost like you could see the the little wind up knob that's used just going the opposite way that you choose to wind it up. And the energy, that frenetic, stressful energy, gradually winding down, losing its power, losing its strength. As the sense of relaxation becomes stronger, and deeper and you may find that the more relaxed you feel that your mind starts to wander maybe you seem to stop listening to me for a while and your mind goes somewhere else and then you realize you're listening to me again. And that was just your mind drifting to sleep. Which is quite natural. Because sometimes when we're stressed and tense, we not, may not actually be aware of what we need we physically or emotionally need in this moment. But when you allow your body and mind to relax completely and you let go of all thoughts, concerns, worries, ideas, all letting them go, allowing them to drop onto the floor. start to get in touch with the feelings of such relaxation. It feels so nice to be in touch with the calmness of the different body parts as they become looser so even the breathing seems easier and more natural and effortless as that cool air enters through your mouth or nose into your lungs breathing in comfort 
some relaxation and then just breathing out any excess remaining tension and stress from every part of your body and mind and as you start to focus on your mind maybe you notice that things are come to a standstill and maybe just much much slower than before because your mind is not really needed in listening to my voice which allows your mind to relax just as deeply as your body that synchronicity between the relaxation of your body and the relaxation of your mind lets you know that feeling completely calm, loose and relaxed really is So many positive benefits for your body, your mind and your life to be able to let go of everything and to relax completely in all parts of your body. Even your bones are relaxed. All your muscles are relaxed. Even the skin that covers your body is relaxed. Every starts to feel the benefit of this healing relaxation and as you focus from the inside of your scalp where your brain is you can start to realize and notice the benefit of your brain relaxing deeply and then as your brain continues to relax it sends those messages to the rest of your body and your mind to Concerns allow them just to drop onto the floor because they're no longer necessary in this moment, in this moment of deep relaxation and calmness, filling. brain with deep, calm 
concentrated healing calming relaxing every part of your brain ever-increasing sensations of comfort that are spreading throughout your body, relaxing each and every muscle of your body. and calm, so very, very peaceful in every part of your body, letting go everything, everything 
do a body scan focusing on firstly how you feel in your body not trying to change how you feel not trying to relax not trying to move away from any discomfort or stress or tension but just accepting observing and accepting how you feel in the different parts of your body just allowing yourself to be exactly as you are to notice to get in touch with how you actually feel in this moment so I'm going to start off by focusing on your hands just be aware of your hands I'd like you to move your hands around just Maybe move your fingers a little bit, opening and closing your hands very gently, just so that you can get in touch with how your hands and your fingers feel. Focusing now on your feet. And if you can, just do kind of an equivalent with your feet as you've just done with your hands. Maybe turning your ankles, moving your feet around, moving your toes gently. in how your feet feel in this moment. Focusing now on your eyes. I'd like you to just focus on your eyelids. Maybe you can open and close your eyes a couple of times to really get in touch with how you feel when you do close your eyes. The muscle changes in your eyes when you do close them. Maybe raising your eyebrows as it stretches the tops of your eyes. Perhaps squinting your eyes, scrunching up your eyes, just so you can really get in touch with all aspects of how your eyes feel. Focusing on your thighs. I'm going to just ask you to gently tense your thighs. Just very, very gently. Just enough so you can become more attuned to the physical sensation of your upper legs, the front of your thighs and the backs of your thighs, noticing and observing how your thighs feel. to the back of your neck 
stops noticing the back of your neck, the muscles, and of course they lead to the side of your neck, they also lead to the top of your back, which lead to your shoulders. So as you focus on the back of your neck, maybe you can move your head gently upwards as if you were looking up, maybe moving your head down as if you were looking down, perhaps moving your head side to side, right to left. to force anything, it has to be very, very gentle, just so that you can be more in touch with the feelings, with the sensations, the physical sensations of how the back of your neck feels right now. As we now focus on the tops of your arms, the parts where your biceps and your biceps are between your elbow and your shoulders, as you focus on those parts, the tops of your arms, you may like to just tense them, but very, very gently. in any pressure whatsoever on your arms. It's just so that you can gain more of a sense of how your upper arms are feeling in this moment. Noticing as you gently, very gently, and slowly tighten the muscles and then let go. Notice how the tops of your arms feel. stomach, the area, the lower abdomen area below your belly button, moving all the way down to your hips, just above your groin. Maybe you're able to tense these muscles in that area very, very gently and slowly. If that is a difficult thing to do, maybe you can just move your body, pushing your stomach up side, using your hips, just so that you can get more in tune with how your lower abdomen area is feeling in this 
this moment. Just noticing the physical sensations of your lower abdomen. And as we move your attention Seeing your lips and inside your mouth, your teeth, your gums, your tongue. Just noticing. it gently against the side of your mouth and then to the right gently to the side of your mouth perhaps pressing up against the the top of your mouth and then down gently against the bottom of your mouth Always very slowly and very, very gentle. So that you can be aware of how you feel. on your wrists and I'm going to ask you to maybe just rotate your wrists by moving your hands in a circular motion very Gently and slowly, just so that you can feel the sensations that you are currently experiencing. Observe your lower back. And that back part is 
just above your hips, where your coccyx are, and the whole area, which also really does include the sides of your body, because those muscles are very much connected. As those muscles also move into your hip area, connecting to your buttocks, the sides of your hips, and if you're physically able to do so, maybe you can very gently just move your body ever so slightly, very slowly, sort of side to side, just enough physical sensations of your lower back, as we now move to your attention. just, if it's okay to do so, gently open your mouth, not wide, no stretching, just very gently and slowly opening your mouth and closing your Noticing now your chest area, you don't need to do anything to move your chest because it moves every time.
and let it go with each breath you take. As you focus on how your chest feels when you This part of your body moves also every time you breathe. You may not notice that, usually, but as you observe.
those muscles and those bones in your midsection. Noticing how your hips feel right now. You can very, very gently. Everything starts to slow down. Including the thoughts in your mind and your mind itself just starts to gradually it doesn't have to be instant, but just gradually starting to, it's almost like time is stretching. It's a slower pace to maybe what you're used to in your day-to-day -day life. It's a slower movement of energy. Very small movements which make up the larger movements which is always the case. And when you move your hand, it might seem like it's one movement, but it's lots of minute different muscles moving in accordance with each other. And what happens in this space that we're sharing is we move from that big movement into those smaller movements. Starting to focus on how your body feels, but not just as a whole, not just, oh, I'm feeling this way, I'm feeling stressed or tense, or I'm feeling relaxed and calm, I'm feeling this way, I'm feeling that way. Starting to notice that your body 
begins to present to you small feelings around your body. Small physical sensations in your legs, whether pleasurable or not. Maybe resisting the temptation to label them or to judge them, those feelings, just thinking them, thinking about them as just being neutral, just feelings. Particularly concerned, but just noticing what your body is telling you. The feelings in your arms, instead of feeling the whole of the arm, maybe notice those individual feelings, all those different muscles and the skin, the hairs of your arms, the all the internal parts of your arms, the veins. Just being aware of maybe your elbow on your right arm has a certain feeling, maybe your left wrist also has its own individual physical sensation. about your forearm and your right arm. Your right forearm there may not be any particular feeling that you could even give a name to. It may not feel like anything other than just a feeling, you know, it's there. The feelings in your shoulders. Perhaps your shoulders, when you think about them, kind of almost like they're the same, you know, the same feeling. Almost like your, both of your shoulders are just one thing course they're not. And when you focus on your left shoulder and then on your right shoulder, maybe you find that you move the muscles a little bit, maybe tense the muscles gently. Noticing the difference in each shoulder. Your lower back. left side of your lower back and the right side of your lower back. Your core. 
reinforce that connection to your buttocks and to your hips. And also moving up into the middle of your back. sometimes, like right now actually, when I focus on that part, when I focused on my buttocks, and then I focused on my, the middle of my back, it almost felt like the muscles in my lower back were being stretched, very gently, but just stretched a little bit. Even though I wasn't doing anything to try to stretch your lower back, it just seemed to happen. The feeling of very gently stretching your lower back. along that feeling in the chest just noticing what sensations you are experiencing in your chest right now. And there's so much of the chest. Obviously there's the collarbone leading to the chest. You've got the chest bone. You've got the muscles in your chest. And of course, if you're female, there's possibly the breasts. If you're male, you've got the different, well, mine aren't that different these days, but there may be more muscles the top of the chest, but at the side, underneath, it's pretty much the same, whether you're a man or a woman, there's muscles there, muscles that stretch out to your back, as well as breast tissue which stretches and moves into your back. So just being aware of your chest. with whatever feeling there is in your chest. And what I noticed that I focus on my chest, I feel it in my, my back my upper back I mean I guess the obvious reason would be because you know I'm breathing in and it stretches my chest and my back at the same time yeah it feels feels okay. Doesn't feel a little bit of pain in my right chest. A little bit, not pain, but a little discomfort, maybe stiffness possibly. 
I don't know. Notice my shoulders are also wanting to flex for some reason. I think that's probably part of my upper back. That connection between my shoulders and my upper back. Because I can move my shoulders and stretch the muscles in my back. Moving the shoulders backwards or up. Which then moves the, I think it's the scapulas in your back. Feels quite nice actually. The good thing about this is you can, if you want to, you can just flex or stimulate the various muscles in your body gently in order to get more of a sense of how they feel. And when you're relaxing, and you do tense a muscle, and you let it go, and you let it relax, it relaxes way than it would normally. But you have to feel that you're able to do that. There's no point doing it if there's a, a issue with a per part of your body. You need to be gentle with yourself all times when you're relaxing deeply it's important to be kind to yourself as you notice your mind how much has your mind slowed down since we started this recording? How calm and peaceful your mind right now. With nothing to think about and just my voice to listen to because you know the intention behind this recording is relaxation. At the very least, for you to feel more relaxed at the end of the recording than you did at the beginning. At the very least, for your mind to slow down as your body continues to relax. Because that's what you want to happen. That's what you expect. to 
feel your body. Maybe calming your mind to the point of boredom. When you start maybe to drift away. as if you are moving further away from your body and your mind, just leaving that there. Kind of like in a, an escape pod in a spaceship, like a movie space movie, you know, and they get into that little pod and it sends them <laughs> far away from the spaceship. Safe to dream. Continue to relax drifting. Focusing on the feeling of those individual parts of your body that are relaxing one by one. that you weren't listening to my voice because your mind started to imagine something different maybe 
started to almost move into some kind of a dreamy state. And then you become aware of my voice again. And even though you may want to focus on my voice, you may also wish to allow your mind to just drift naturally into that space of comfort and safety. As you feel body like a warm blanket covering you gently keeping your body at just the perfect temperature Even if you can hear background sounds, they just don't seem to matter anymore. There's that sense of peace spreads through your mind. gentle breeze yet strong enough to blow away all negativity strong enough to remove from your mind any anxiety or stress there before. And blow away any other thoughts or feelings that just don't fit with the sense that is filling your body and your mind. you focus on your mind, and you count down from ten down to one, and with each number you hear, your mind will become Just slightly and from ten down to nine, just a slight movement. From nine down to eight, just another small change in how you feel. Eight down to 
to seven. That feeling is like there's a gap, almost like a gap. It starts to get wider. The gap between those feelings that you used to have in your mind. to the feelings you have that are growing now, feelings of comfort and security and confidence, and that gap becomes wider, eight down to seven, seven down to six, and when you get to five, start to have a certain physical sensation, almost like there's a magnet outside of your head sucking the tension and the stress and any remaining feelings that you don't want, sucking them out through your skull. And down to four, you can start to really experience that sense of not just emptiness, but space. A place full of fresh air. place where you can stretch. It's almost as if as you go down to four and three, your mind is expanding with this sense of peace and tranquility growing. As it moves down to two, get to one, your mind just feels exactly how you want to feel, almost a perfect feeling, maybe a a sensation that you'd like to keep, a place that's safe where nothing can affect you at all. stay in that, that space of comfort and confidence, confident in your own ability to create this space and this feeling of comfort within your own mind, just by counting from ten down to one. This is something that you can do yourself when you're on your own. A time when you can maybe sit down, maybe just for a few minutes. Close your eyes. And just count slowly from ten down to one and re-experience these feelings in your mind. And when you feel that way in your mind, your body copies your mind.
feeling is spread through your spine and the nervous system into every part of your body. It travels through your bloodstream. Healing and relaxing every particle of your existence. You can practice this a few times before the end of the recording and then you can practice on your own. And each time you count from ten down to one, the feelings of comfort, calmness and Deep, deep relaxation becomes stronger and deeper. Filling your mind and your brain with these positive chemicals that spread throughout your body relaxing you so quickly, relaxing your whole body and mind, so very, very easily, just by counting from ten down to do it now. I'm going to count from 10 down to 1 and I'd like you to repeat the number after me. So when I say 10, you can just repeat to yourself, 10. Just notice, be aware of how you feel. say nine, you can repeat to yourself, nine, again, noticing the increase in comfort and calmness in your The same when I say eight, when I say seven, six, when I say five, four, when I say three. when I say one, you can repeat that number now of course when you do this on your own without listening to me you can say the numbers at whatever speed that you feel is necessary for you, so you can adapt, so if you feel you want to say the numbers 10 down to 1 faster than I do, then go ahead and do that, or if you feel when you do it yourself and you'd like to have more more space between the numbers. Maybe 
would take a lot longer to get from 10 all the way down to 1. That's your choice also to do. to one, that will be the end of this recording, unless of course you're listening with music, and the music will continue.
20. 19. 18. 17. 16. Seven, six, five, four, three, two. Now open your eyes, noticing how you physically feel, having counted down from 20 to 1, allowing stress and tension to leave through your fingertips and your toes. And as you focus on your fingertips, maybe they feel a little bit tingly is, I suppose, quite understanding considering the tension has been exiting your body through your fingertips. So now we're going to count from 20 down to 1 again. This time, you're going to feel relief of tension and stress any anxiety that you may have, leaving through your stomach, just leaving through your stomach, almost as if it's just releasing the whole of your stomach from the navel to just above your chest, or below your chest rather, so surrounding your belly button area whole area, you can feel the tension of your body, whatever's left, just releasing from that area, and you may notice that your stomach will become very relaxed, as I count down from 20 down to 1, 9, 20, 19, 18, 17, 16,
customize it now if you choose or you can just keep them closed because it feels relaxing just notice how your stomach feels and notice as you focus just do a little scan of your body just notice how your body feels focus in upper body, your back, chest, stomach, legs, arms, hands, feet, just noticing, and you know you may start to feel you may have a sense of tiredness, which may be the reason you're listening to this recording, because you natural, calm, relaxing sleep. So now we're going to focus on your forehead. And if you choose, you can incorporate your eyes in this focus as well forehead and your eyes, just that whole area basically, almost as if you were wearing a mask, you know, like a, I don't know, Batman mask or something, or I'm trying to think, <laughs> Zorro or something, you know, the kind of mask that covers your eyes, but also covers quite a lot of the forehead, so focusing on that area because that's the area that you're now going to release tension and stress from your mind, from your brain, from your mind, and any tension that you may have remaining in your face, in your neck, in your jaw, in your eyes, in your forehead, and in your scalp. So basically any tension within your head area, including your going to be released through your forehead and your eyes. As I count down again from 20 down to 1. Now, 20, 19, 18, 17, 16, 15, 14, 13, 
embracing, being aware of the comfort, the increased feeling of relaxation, not just in your head and neck and your eyes, but also the rest of your body. how loose and calm you feel, look how easily it is to just let go completely, let go completely. Focus on the top of your head. And we're going to allow every last piece of tension or stress that might be lingering in your head or in your body, your mind, or your head to just be sucked. sucked out into the clouds. Imagine a big cloud above your head, almost like a whirlpool. It's just going to suck that tension out of the top of your head and just take it away. maybe worries or concerns that are of no use to you now can all be sucked out of the top of your head and taken away as I count down again from 20 down to 1 now 20 Seventeen. 
physically and mentally here right now. Feels so nice to just let go, to give yourself some space to breathe easily, to think calmly, and just to take the break from all that pointless worry and concerns about things that you don't need to think about. This is your time to let go. This is your space to enjoy feeling deeply relaxed, peaceful in your mind, relaxed in your body. You can feel so good. Enjoy that serenity that comes with letting go completely. That peacefulness that comes with being in this. sense of calmness for as long as you choose. If you choose to drift off into a deep, healing, natural sleep, then you can do that. feeling of calmness physically and in your mind for as long as you choose to be completely relaxed. Completely relaxed. And I'd like you to make up your mind going to relax. And I want to explore that with you, what it feels like when you actually decide that you're going to relax. Not forcing yourself, but giving yourself that I guess it is a command really, isn't it, when you're telling yourself, relax, in a gentle but firm way that only you can really tell yourself in that way. You can't really have someone else saying to you, now relax, relax, you know, and it needs to be gentle, but you can't, someone else can't really have the same the same kind of influence or power that you have over your own physicality over how you feel because when you say to yourself it means more it's personal and your brain and your unconscious mind and your body listens to what you say. So for example, we'll test it out. We'll give a little test, a few little tests along the way and you can get more of an idea of the force, a positive
positive force that you can have in creating a sense of comfort and relaxation in your body and your mind quite quickly just by you telling yourself to relax. So I'm going to start by, let's, let's focus on your hands. So focus on your hands and just tell your hands to relax. So just say relax as you focus on your hands. You could say my hands are relaxed or I want my hands to relax. But I think if you actually do it directly by focusing and imagining that your hands can hear what you're saying. Now you might have got little ears, that's all little ears. So talking to your hands and just say relax. Noticing. How your hands start to relax. Now focus on your eyes and tell your eyes to relax. So you're just saying the same word, relax. Now find the right tone for you. You know, I might say relax, but you you might say relax or relax. But you know, you, you might say it differently to yourself. And that's important for you to gauge what feels right for you. So just tell your eyes to relax whilst focusing on your eyes, your eyelids, the muscles around your eyes, your eyebrows. And just tell your eyes directly, relax. I just did that myself and sometimes you may feel that you need a bit more time for the different parts to relax, you know, because I start talking again and maybe that part hasn't relaxed fully. So what will happen is it will just continue to relax even though I'm talking. And that's happening with my eyes. Something else I noticed is when I started focusing on my eyes, they actually almost became, they got worse before they got better in a way. So I, got, I felt a degree of tension growing in my eyes and then disappearing. So I think what that was really was just me becoming more aware of the tension that was already there that I wasn't that I wasn't focusing on it fully. So I wasn't really acknowledging it or um, really conscious to those feelings. And my eyes are still continuing to relax as well as my hands actually. hands have got a certain kind of energy, like not buzzing, but a kind of feel a degree of energy in my hands. Maybe that's where the tension is being released. Maybe that's causing that. The next part, I think, 
we could focus on the back of the neck. That's a part that's quite often, um, quite often me holds tension. I don't know about for yourself, but I think it's quite a, a standard place where tension is sometimes held. So, and I'm I'm doing the exactly what you're doing as you do it as well. So I'm telling my body parts to relax as well. So if you tell your neck back of your neck, focus on the back of your neck, it's safe, relax, in your own words, in your own tone, in your own voice, you can say out loud or you can just say it to yourself internally, but you're focusing and you're saying it literally to the back of your neck, as if the back of your neck can actually hear what you're saying. do that now and just say relax to the back of your neck and I'll do the same. similar thing is even though I was focusing on the back of the neck the other parts started to I don't know show themselves to me or maybe because I was in a busy night sleep as well but I started noticing the feelings in my shoulders the tension in my shoulders and in my upper back Whether that was because my the back of my neck was saying, I'm pretty much okay. It's the other parts that were under tension. But my lower, my, my back of my neck is still relaxing. But I just became more aware of other parts that needed the tension. Now this might have happened not, it doesn't mean that it's going any wrong, it just means you're being notified of more places that are also wanting to be relaxed. So I'm going to focus on my upper back, so you can do the same, even if you don't have any uh, feelings of tension that are obvious in your upper back. Focus on your back and the whole area from your shoulder blades down to the middle of your back and your spine. And I hear it's more the shoulder blades that you're aware of. Yeah, that's the parts that you know that have been giving you the nod. Something strange happened and and this often happens in women from what sixteen years or something and I often I don't know why I'm surprised I'm amazed really that there can be a feeling that when I was focusing on the back of my neck my upper back was felt like it was being quite stressed and in need of attention. As soon as I started talking to you about the upper 
as if it doesn't need to hear the words, it just needs attention. It just needs to be noticed. That is something that often happens in this So the body seems to just take notice and decide in its own way to start relaxing. Other parts of the body start to just be loosened.